Welcome to the LAN show, guys. Sorry we are a little bit late. We had a bit of a setback this morning, <laughs> which involved me rescuing Slick from a bridge. <laughs> which um, could have been really bad. You know, the first thing the police officer told me when I showed up was that fairly recently someone had been stopped in the exact same spot and had tried to fix their car, went under their car, and died because someone rear-ended them. Wow. So he was like, yeah. It's probably good that you're directing traffic. So Speaking your strategy of, of standing in the top of the, like, standing in a convertible... I would have seen them coming. ...going like this, so you could have at least leapt into the oncoming traffic that was in either of the lanes on either side of you. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of great topics for you today, though, guys. We're going to be talking about Google Glass got hacked! Yeah, like, big time. Like, awesomely. <laughs> the new Motorola X is going to, um... So, yeah, Moto X, I guess, is what they're calling it. But the new Moto X ha is going to be always listening. Always listening for voice commands. Just like that. What's that other device that has that that's, like, really good Can, and everyone loves it and is Kintect? happy Xbox about it? Kintect? Xbox 2? Something? Um, it must have been... Um, well, it's, it's not the second... Chronic? Kinectic? Canucks? No, that's Kinetic? a hockey team. Kinetic? Not sure. Anyway, so we'll see how thrilled people are about this. We've also got a super fast Thunderbolt flash drive prototype from Intel, as well as some community topics, including AMD's $74 million net loss last quarter, but... It's not all bad news. It's not all bad news. They have a new CPU that looks pretty fast, and they also have a... Uh, okay, they're saying... Q3, return to profitability for advanced micro devices, which is extremely exciting. So stay tuned, guys. We also have our special guest, Logan, from Raise the World or Tech, Syndic Tech Syndicate, but Raise the World with a zero instead of an O on YouTube. So that guy will be joining us later on in the show. Guys, we enjoy watching that intro probably just as much as you do. Seriously. Or maybe about ten times more than you do. At least. At least ten times. I think I have the worst hair ever today. I think it would actually be improved by just doing this. And mine's like, fine. What yeah, happened? Yeah, I know. It's like opposite day or something <laughs> like that. It must, be, uh, it must be the influence of your new roommate who has the best hair ever. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. We've got our first topic of the day. Google Glass got hacksword. Yo. Here we go. So this is from NPR.org. And pretty much this gentleman right here with the extremely scary mug is responsible for... <laughs> <clears throat> hacking Google Glass to allow facial recognition, which is something that Google really didn't want people doing for a number of security and privacy concern reasons. Sorry, you were about to say I think, something? I think it was Roger or Robert or something. They did the face recognition thing. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Which one's this? This is Steven Balaban. Yeah. Um, he, he, I think he's implementing a new operating system and a way... He's... Yep, no, Balaban first announced he had built an app that lets folks use okay, Glass awesome. for facial recognition, and he has also set out right that his goal is to build an operating system that allows Google Glass to do things that um, <laughs> Google never really intended it to do. <clears throat> so another, another guy who found an interesting exploit, oh, Mark Rogers, right, this, this, one, this one's fascinating. He, so he figured out that you could hijack Glass with a malicious QR code. If and you... The, Go ahead. Sorry. The amount of times people are just going to scan a QR code is insane. Yeah, I know. You just put a QR code on, like, a random piece of paper on the street, and if someone's wearing a glass, let's They're, face it, boop. how much of a techie dork are they? Hey, Google Glass, scan this QR code. Why not, right? If it's, especially if it's something new, you want to show your friends, you're just going to scan it. I mean, with all of this said, I think the way that Google is rolling out glass, first of all, by invitation only during the first wave, and then to still, the very select few, I like that they're making it really expensive. Because, let's face it, they're Google. If they wanted to sell them for a dollar or give them away, honestly, the loss on the Glass project has nothing to do with the hardware. The, the fact that they sell it for $100 or $1,000 or $10,000 actually 
doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what they're spending on this project, but by making the barrier of entry high, I think they're going to attract a more responsible They can basically crowd. have a selective user base. Yes. Yes, a very selective a very selective user base. So, I mean, this all comes along with the news that uh, that someone figured out how to get Google Glass to take a picture simply by winking. Again, these are things that it's not really supposed to do. It's supposed to have a light when it's recording video. It is supposed to, well, <laughs> who knows? It's a whole new category, right? Yeah, basically, last week we talked about their FAQ about how they're going to have all this privacy stuff. And we both mentioned how it was going to get blown wide open. It's Android, and for then, one thing. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Makes it like you're asking for it to be blown wide open. And then not even a week later, we hear about this, which is where, like, in even more ways than we thought of, it's been massively blown wide open. And, I mean, Google's reacting very swiftly, very strongly. Let's see. <clears throat> so when Balaban first announced that he'd built the app that lets folks use glass for facial recognition, Google reacted harshly, <laughs> was, the, was the words. Uh, <clears throat> that were used here. So guys, do do check out the article on NPR.org. We should actually, where are we going to post this doc so that people can actually check it out? Why don't I post it in the uh, Linus, Linus News news and rambling section of the forum? I'll post the whole doc when we're done so you can check it out while you're watching the sure. archive if you decide to do that. <clears throat> All right. So, I mean, there's two ways of looking at this. And the first thing I kind of think I said to you was, you know, Stephen Balaban, right. why you got to be a douche about this? I why you got, why you got to circumvent the EULA? Why you got to, like, use the device for things it wasn't intended? I, I came back from that with thinking about it from the open security point of view, which is where if he blows it open and releases it to everyone, they can fix it. And people can be aware of and the problem. And people can be aware of it. They can know what's going on. Everyone's aware. Everyone's working to fix it. If he doesn't, then only a select few very, very small group of people will know about it, and they will all be able to exploit it to a crazy degree, because no one will know about it, and no one will be able to defend themselves from it. Right. Which leads us to, I mean, are the, are the risks to our privacy really the ones that come from the things we don't know about? Or are the risks to our privacy more to do with a changing of the way that we approach the world and the, the personal freedoms that we're giving up voluntarily. That's it's the latter, in my opinion, because if you know about something, you can, you can deal with it in whatever way you want. That's just like how encryption works. But isn't that just it? People are going to know about the fundamental privacy flaw that is something like a wearable technology, like whether it's Google Glass or whether it's wearable... Uh, computers watches. such as smartwatches, which are going to be a huge play oh, yeah. in the next year. Everyone's jumping on that. I mean, for most users who really don't really know what's best for them, if you tell them, oh, well, okay, here's the risks and people will be able to see your face. I mean, so many callers last week. By the way, guys, we are moving away from the random live callers during the WAN show, and we are moving towards having those in the after party with just special celebrity callers during the WAN show itself. Um, I mean, with most of them saying, well, I don't really have anything to hide, but at what point does something happen? Like, I was, I was, I was having, uh, when I ride my bike, I, uh, I'm often sort of lost in thought about something else because I have to be 100% focused on riding, so I can't think about work or whatever else, but sometimes that allows me to think about other things. And uh, one of the things I was thinking about is, what if I was falsely accused in this day and age what if, um, you know, what if my wife died and I was falsely accused of whatever the case may be? Does the technology that exists do more to... Implicate or protect you? Yes. So if I were to say something like, here's a picture of me somewhere else, and the rebuttal is, well, that was clearly photoshopped, look at the pixels. Even if the picture was real, Am I being protected by this technology, or, is, or are things being worse? What if the same thing happened where someone was trying to prove that I was there, they hijacked my Twitter account, and have me tweeting from a location at a particular time? Sir, did you ever not have your phone on you? No, no, I've had my phone the whole time. Anything you can say can and will be used against you in court. That's well, right, not, it can will. Can and will be used to protect you in court. That's right. Against you. So I, that was just sort of a, a thought that I had, and as we, as we open ourselves up to more things, that uh, can pinpoint where you are and what you're doing at any given time, does that open up more potential 
for these things to be exploited. Especially when they can be changed. When they can be spoofed. But then people believe them to yes. like any degree. That that whole thing where like uh, picture it didn't happen. Yes. Like that that used to be such a big deal, but then Photoshop became so easy to use and so popular that picture it didn't happen went away. Then it became uh, video or it didn't happen. Yep. But then video is so easy to mess with. I mean, you, you saw the uh, the eagle picking up the kid on YouTube. So many people fell for that. Yes. Like video is so easy to mess with now. Now what do you go to? Now what do you go now to? Now everyone jumps on these tag things like geolocation and pictures and all yep. that stuff. But that's easy to spoof too. So, and I mean, and the whole thing, innocent until proven guilty, only really applies before everyone's decided you're guilty. Yep. If all of us, like, okay, the papers catch wind of this evidence of a picture that was taken with your phone at that location. You're screwed. Everyone thinks you're guilty at that all, point. All of a sudden, you're going to have protests all over the place about a verdict that lets you off because hopefully someone on the jury understands that that thing could have been, could have been faked in, in whatever way. And hopefully whoever's going after you isn't sophisticated enough that they've... Yeah. Anyway, that was just one of my random it's, thoughts. It's that... interesting. This stuff is getting so nuts. Like, okay, I didn't follow the Zimmerman trial at all. I, at all. I was looking at it a little bit after the fact when I found out about the, the riots all yeah. over the place. Yeah. But, like, man, I've heard stuff, circumstantial evidence and all this stuff going all over the place. It's getting crazy. Yeah. And, like, if you're not up on tech, it's going to be hard to sit in on court. And now. people are so polarized on an issue like that like you try to read any facebook discussion thread on the oh, zimmerman trial and half of the people are you know i mean it's just become a completely nonsensical fight we don't get into politics on no. the wan show just to throw that out there for you guys but like half of the people are holding up signs saying like i there was uh, like an old white dude holding up a sign saying i didn't get followed and I'm sitting here going like, you know what, it's not even about races, it's not about ideologies anymore, it's about a perception. Yeah. And everyone perceives things completely it's all differently. About perception. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, and, and, but when you look at sort of where that perception comes from and how that's changing right now with something like a, a, a hashtag or a location or I mean, yep. okay, hashtag's a bad example, but you know, hashtag killed my wife. You know, that, okay, well, you probably shouldn't use that hashtag. Guys, we are not trying to do create not, a... Do not use... No trending Twitter topics. <laughs> hashtag kill my wife. You did not see it here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> let's, That's ridiculous. Let's move into our next topic here, I think. Um, so this is an article from The Verge. Man, I love The Verge. Those guys are awesome. If yep. you don't follow The Verge, just follow The Verge, and then you won't even have to watch our show unless Whoa. you love our color commentary. So Whoa. our color commentary is outstanding. Wait, follow The Verge and you won't have to watch our show? We have green commentary. We also That's have a color. all of these colors. Yeah, we have all those colors, too. And we even have a special... Okay, you know what? The Moto X will be listening for your voice commands, leaked video shows. So, yay, oh, Canada. Roger's Carrier here in Canada was yeah. the one that evidently leaked the video showing that the Moto X is the second high-profile device that is going to feature an always-on listening feature. So, it is going to be more intelligent in not only the always listening way but also in the way it gives you notifications so it's going to instead of blinking some meaningless light and you can get apps like blink feed have you tried blink feed i have not tried blink feed but i read that and mine's not meaningless i have it color coded okay you can have color coded um i tried blink feed it was kind of it's the kind of thing where you, yeah if you tinker with it it's actually quite helpful but there's no way my mom could do it Whereas this is supposed to be an intuitive way to flash up the appropriate messages on your screen in an appropriate fashion and, and, and all of that. So they're, they're, they're doing that. They're also adding motion gestures. So flicking your wrist to, as, wrist to access the camera or taking a photo by tapping anywhere on the screen instead of having to press a shutter button, which mm. I don't think is actually no. that revolutionary. I want a shutter button anyways. I, I'm a little bit surprised that, well, no, it's not even just that, but I've used devices that have that functionality yeah. before. That's true. So I like it to focus, and then I... Yeah, yeah, I prefer touch screen to focus, yeah, shutter button yeah. to take a picture. But, but at any rate, the thing to me that's most fascinating about this is not the Moto X. That's kind of irrelevant. But the fact that this is the future Google sees. Yep. This is the way they're moving. Whether it's glass or whether it's... So, I mean, is Microsoft being more forward-thinking 
than we're giving them credit for by having an always listening feature on Connect. This is the way Google's going. The problem. Why do we accept the, it from them and not from Microsoft? The problem with uh, Connect is the fact that it's always on. You can turn Glass off. It's always listening while it's on, but you can turn it off. What about Moto X? It doesn't have to call in. Moto X, I think it's not going to get as much traction because, yeah, okay, it's always with you. And it's a phone. So it's always gonna, with you, and always it's always it on. It on. It's, you're going to always want it on. I think Moto X will not get the backfire that Connect has gotten because Moto X, it's, I'm sorry, Motorola, it's not as high profile. Okay. It is a high profile device. It's not the next Xbox. It's not supposed to be a game console. Yeah. It's supposed to be a phone. Yeah. Which this kind of could at least somewhat be related makes to. Makes a little bit more sense. Phone functionality. Makes, a makes a little bit more sense. B more people are going to care about the new Xbox release than the new Moto X. So to you, it's an expectation thing. The expectations were high for Xbox. They expected it to be a gaming and console. And a massive crowd. And it was a voice powered vocal crowd. TV watching. Yeah. device that listens to you. Yeah. Whereas Moto X will be a phone that we already are kind of, well, Siri broke broke new ground on that whole thing. Or I mean, you could say Samsung's S voice was, yeah. but it wasn't very good. No. Um, but, <laughs> right, whatever. But, but we're used to, the, we're getting used to the concept of talking to our devices. You know what's funny is I personally never use voice control for anything. I set my alarm with it. Okay. I hold the thing down, press the button, wake me up at 8.30. Okay. And based on how many times you've shown up late for work. Speaking of, do you want to get into this? Showing up late to work. Do you want to get into this right now? Yeah, I'm not, Is this a good time? not having a good track record this week. <laughs> this, since, since we got back from Computech. No. Yeah. This week you've and the last half once? of last... Well, the one time that you had to be here for the contractor. Well, I had to be here for that. <laughs> Whatever. I didn't bring it up. <laughs> if, if you're going to bring it up now. Maybe this is why you have a key. <laughs> so that some, someone has to be here to let, to let, uh, <laughs> let everyone in. All right, so we're going to do a Twitter blitz, and then we are going to welcome our first highly anticipated guest, Mr. Logan from Raise the World, or Tech Syndicate, whichever you do prefer. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, guys, hit us on Twitter. We're going to be doing Twitter Q&A over the next little bit here, and I'm just going to ping Logan on comms and see if he's ready to join us. You almost ready? Said he was going to be sitting around playing Elder Scrolls. Oh, so. no, I just saw some... Sorry. That, that's awesome. Elder Scrolls is great, and Logan's great. I just saw someone go hashtag killed my wife in Twitch in Twitch chat. No, 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 no. Someone did. You know that stupid raise your dongers thing? Someone did that, but replaced dongers with Logan. Raise your Logans. Raise your Logans. All right, Logan. I just heard back from him on comms. He'll be joining us in just a few minutes here, guys. I'm extremely excited about this. He's a good guy, and yes, I'm excited. Very excited. Are you? you? Want to sit closer to me? To... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Hi from El Salvador. Hello, El Salvador. Hello. Haswell or Ivy Bridge for Hackintosh? Great question. I don't imagine if you're using the very latest version that it will matter much. However, if you head over to... Um, Tony, whatever, Tony OSX, Mac, whatever. I don't remember. Yeah, t Tony something or other. If you Google Go Tony yeah. Hackintosh, then you'll, you'll come up with it. the right thing. Um, Go over there, because those guys are the experts on the whole Hackintosh thing, and often there's more to it than just this processor architecture versus that processor architecture, and it can have a lot more to do with things like what wireless chipset you're using or whatever else, whether you're going to be able to get a full-fledged OS X installation yeah. going. Should I swap my iPhone 5 for the HTC One? Not very heavy usage, more because I can. I, if it's free... If it's free, sure. If you want the bigger screen, yes. I find the HTC One is way better for content consumption than my old iPhone 4. With that said, the iPhone 5 being more widescreen is a little bit better for content consumption. Um, I, I don't miss, OLED, I don't miss um, iOS, but I don't... These days, I've, been, I've actually been using my iPhone. Uh, like every night, I'll use it. I'll reply to some tweets with it. I, I just, I'm going to keep using it just to see if... If it, you know, if it pulls you back, if it calls for me, um, and it doesn't, but it also doesn't bother me. 
because I'm not the same kind of hardcore phone user that some people are. And o iOS did everything I needed it to do. Just Android can do more and it can do it a little bit more easily sometimes. That's all. Uh, my router's overheating even though it's in the coldest room in my house. Any tips? Uh, throw a fan on it. You can get, uh, Gellid actually makes a router cooler. No way. Yeah. Do they really? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it was, I don't know if it's, it was originally marketed as a router cooler, but they said, uh, maybe it was. I don't, it was marketed for something, but it works perfectly for router cooling. Okay, so. check it out. Gellid Solutions. Apparently they have a router cooler, which is bizarre. Um, totally inappropriate, Chris Moore. I uh, love my Mac. Should I sell it? If you love your Mac, then I don't know why you would sell it. Um, there are, I personally believe there are better PC notebooks now yeah. than MacBooks. Yeah. Did you see the Blade 14? No. Oh, but it's downstairs. A few different, yeah, I know. Whoa, big cut. A few different brands lately have actually been releasing really nice PC um, notebooks. ZenBook Infinity. ZenBook Infinity. Looks outstanding. There's that, um, ah, I always forget the name, but it's got the cool double. Vizio. Vizio. The new yep. Vizio laptop is really nice. Really nice. Um, Acer Aspire S7, as you guys know, huge fanboy. The next gen one fixes every problem I had. It has a better touchpad. It has longer travel on the keys. It is slightly thinner, has better battery life. And I think there's one other thing. Be uh, touchpad? Yeah, I just said that, I think. Oh. Anyway, whatever. It's better, and it's like, oh, I love this laptop. So, um, there's you don't... Use, there's use cases for everything. You used to have to go Mac to get a well-built notebook. And you yeah. don't have to anymore. No. So, there you go. Interesting thing on that topic, uh, Freddie Wong's crew is moving to PC. Are they? And they have a big thing about why they're moving to PC. Awesome. Would you upgrade from i5 2500K? Probably not. Uh, what's your opinion on the new Razer earbuds? Actually, they arrived today. I haven't tried them yet. We just got them like half an hour ago. With that said, the marketing all over Razer's site says bass heavy. So I can already tell you that bass I'm heavy. sort of, I'm going to give it a mediocre at best because I don't particularly appreciate an extremely heavy bass experience. We usually go for quite wide open. Yeah, uh, more of a balanced. What do you think about deleting CPUs? I think it's pretty pointless these days because you're not going to get much more clock speed out of it. Why is Display Fusion a must for dual monitors? You use it, right? It's awesome. By the way, right now it's like 69% off on Steam. I should probably buy it. I, it's awesome. So okay. if you're running Windows 7, if you're running Windows 8, I don't think it's a big deal. If you're running Windows 7, get it. it a lot of really good things, just look it up. Okay, laser or optical mouse, which do you prefer and why? I use a laser mouse. There's different reasons for yeah. different situations. So optical doesn't have the acceleration issues. Um, laser is super high DPI, but I think most people don't need that. And optical, you can get a better range of low DPI. All right, so that's pretty much it for the Twitter Blitz. We are going to bring on the guest. All right, let me just, uh, I, don't, I don't have a less ghetto way to do this right now, guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, yeah, wow. That is a fantastic, uh, hold on, let's just get rid of that, and we're gonna add it to this scene instead. So our special guest this week is powered by Razor Combs, as per the, yes. uh, we should just replace. Logan. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Logan, how's it going? Uh, better than average. Let me turn down your live stream. <laughs> All right, let me get my headphones on. <laughs> look, I look so angry, Jesus. <laughs> you do look angry. I think that orange and white background is uh, striking. <laughs> you know why he's angry? Because <laughs> I'm serious. He's very serious about the topic that we're going to talk about. What are we talking about? What do you guys want to segue? It's your show. Let's, uh, what, are, what are we talking about? We are All talking right. about a, a, basically the blueprints for NSA that Snowden apparently has. Ah, yes, let's go with that one. Okay, so I'm going to show the audience the article here on NBC News, and uh, hopefully you had a chance to check this out before we started. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Okay, so reporter says Snowden has an instruction manual for how the NSA is built. So he's been hiding in an airport in Russia, uh, trying to figure out if, you know, they're going to let him in for a while before he goes to South America, or if they're not, or if they're going to require him to not leak anything, which he has already said he's willing to do. But this blueprint is basically the instructions for how to build the NSA. And Snowden has come right out and said, I don't want anyone to have this because there's two outcomes here. Either someone else could build it or someone could circumvent it. And these are both bad things. Logan. All right, well, the dude doesn't seem like an anti-patriot. And if he was to share something like this, this would um, damage the country. Now, the question that we really need to ask, I like to get to the root of things, like what's behind everything. And that is, does the NSA really need to exist? Now, that's a question that we should talk about outside of Snowden. But 
and I think Snowden thinks that it shouldn't exist. Um, but if he does share this, this would be against everything that he has done, in my opinion. And Tell me something. Had, go ahead. If he thinks it shouldn't exist, wouldn't blowing the lid off of it completely but, make it so that it doesn't exist? Or is this like guns, where if you just give everyone guns, that doesn't make guns not exist? But well, like Logan just said, uh, sorry, like Logan just said, he's not an anti-patriot. He is fairly patriotic, so he doesn't actually want to hurt the states, and he believes that this could hurt the states. He still doesn't necessarily think the NSA should exist, but he also doesn't want to hurt his country. Well, yeah, think about this. There, there could be a lot of state secrets in this document, and those state secrets could do irreparable damage to the intelligence system in America, and it could give people in other countries secrets about how America does things. And those, some of the things uh, do need to be secret, uh, from from everybody, I mean, some some things, but there has to be oversight, and uh, you know there can't just be this ridiculous, uh, you know, like warrantless, you know, wiretapping all over the country without any oversight at all, which seems to be what's going on. And I think that's what he's blowing the whistle about, and he doesn't really want to divulge anything that's going to do irreparable damage otherwise. If well, what his sense. whole? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I'm done. I was just going to say what his agenda seems to be is actually uh, the opposite of anti-patriotic. And it seems to me his concern is out of the welfare of the American people at whatever cost that happens to be to himself. So what is he more concerned about for the American people? The replication of an NSA-like system or the circumvention of it? I think the main thing that he is... Um is trying to do here is get us back on the track of democracy and we even had Jimmy Carter come out this week and he spoke to a German newspaper called I think it was Der Spiegel and he told that country that America no longer has a functioning democracy now this is a Nobel Peace Prize winner and an American president he was Ouch. president up until 1981 yeah. he said we no longer have a functioning democracy now this has implications for the rest of the world that's why it's in a German um, newspaper and not an American one. You're not going to see this in many American newspapers, but, you know, a lot of people look to America to form their own policies. And, you know, America is supposed to be like this mecca of freedom and democracy. And when they sure. look at America, they're going to be like, what the hell are these guys doing? So that's I think really that's, that's what Snowden is really trying to do is he's trying to get, you know, it's kind of, sl we need a wake up call. And, um, you know, the president, uh, President Carter also said that um, in the long run, what Snowden has done here will be a good thing for freedom all over the world, not just in America, because the people need a wake up call when the government gets out of line like this. And this really ties in well to one of the topics we were discussing earlier with respect to privacy as a whole and needing a wake up call in terms of the kind of devices we're using, the kind of software we're running and the kind of policies that we're allowing to exist pretty much. And it's interesting because of all this and because of what Snowden's done and because of just all the mass amount of awareness that has been risen, a lot of people that didn't care at all before are now following this and are now getting into tech stuff and are now looking into like, oh, what's going on with this Google Glass thing that I've never heard of? And what's going on with all these listening devices and all that kind of stuff, which is great because more people, more aware is better. And what Snowden's done is he's been a sacrificial lamb in that way, in a way that I actually, um, I think it couldn't have happened without a person doing it. It's like, why do we care about sports teams? Because of the storylines, because of that guy hurting his ankle and then that young up and comer who scored the big goal and whatever else. Like, that's why we follow this stuff. Whereas if there was no Edward Snowden, are we paying this much attention? Do we, does the everyday reader of the newspaper or whatever online publication has replaced the newspaper because it should have by now, <laughs> has that reader going to be going to, is that reader going to have as much interest if there isn't a name right well i mean now you've got major people coming out you've got like you know hollywood directors making uh yeah. the little videos for the internet and yeah 10 years ago everyone that said anything about this was a tinfoil hat wearing you know moron so it is pretty cool that a lot of people are talking about it now i'm not sure if that's going to make things go in a, in a positive or negative direction yet you know we could see the government go crazy and start throwing anyone in jail that coughs you know, which it's kind of maybe happening, but, but. <laughs> yeah, well, you better, you better be careful what you say over there, comrade. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm moving to the woods. I'm, I'm going to be in a cave soon. At this point. Speaking of living in a cave, I'd love for you to tell the viewers who aren't already familiar with you a little bit about Tech Syndicate and the tech and introduce yourself and make sure that they know where to follow you. 
Okay, well, um, we are over at techsyndicate.com. Um, if you guys go to YouTube, it's Raise the World, R-A-Z-E, uh, and then a zero for world, but that's too convoluted. So just type Tech Syndicate into, into <laughs> Google, and it, everything will come up. Uh, we hang out over there. We do a weekly show, and um, we drink a little bit of beer, and, hang, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, we play a lot of video games too. I'm, I'm like, you guys are taking away from my Skyrim time. I was like modding Skyrim, <laughs> installing some new E and B filters and stuff. Like, nice. And then the phone rang. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> so, Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. We do truly appreciate it. Yeah, man, it's a lot of fun. All Good right, so you. let's move on to our next topic here. We're gonna do HBO asks Google to remove a link to VLC. That's a good one. Ahem. So we think this was probably accidental. So they issued a DMCA takedown to Google saying that, you know, it was a copyright infringement. And as unintentional as it may have been, how problematic is this? Because DMCA takedowns, for one thing, don't get policed to nearly the same extent as they probably should, and they are able to affect things about a website's rankings in terms of search, even if they are completely unfounded. More DMCA takedowns equals worse search relevance from Google's eyes, and where's the regulation here? There, there isn't any, as far <laughs> as I really know. Yeah, I always like to, you know, with everything, go as far back or as far down to the root as possible. I mean, Henry David Thoreau said, said there, there were um, 10,000 pe people hacking the branches of evil and only one person hacking the root of evil. So you gotta find out where the root is. And the root here is that um, the people in Hollywood and the, and the powers that be just do not understand the new technology. And yeah. whenever they see something that's suspicious, they try to kill it with fire. And so that's the problem that we're really having. We need to educate them, number one, if that's possible, or replace them. Um, you know, by voting in people who are competent and can actually read, you know, so that's the big problem here. We've got morons running the show and then we've got these old companies with their old technology, you know, like phone systems and they don't want fast internet because that means that their old school phone lines are no longer going to be relevant. So they're all fighting against that. Then we have Google on the other hand. Google's a modern company. They understand what's going on in the world and they are fighting against this because they don't want to police the internet. And that's what, that's basically what everybody wants them to do. They're like, hey, Google. Here, you're, here's your badge. We want you to, we want you to be the sheriff of the internet and take down everything we tell you to do. Like, you know, like the companies are like the, the commissioner Gordon or whatever, and they just want to call Google and be like, take everything down. So Google's fighting back, uh, and you know they're winning and losing some legal battles. So I think that's what we should really look at. But we can do something about this by voting in smart people, and and, and by using companies that understand the internet, and by switching from idiot companies like Comcast and Time Warner uh, to real companies like smaller companies. If you have you know, a small company in your neighborhood, look them up, find, you know, find out what you guys have available. If you live in the woods and you have nothing available, I'm sorry. Which is all a very good point because, and you know what, your comment about voting in smart people, how? I mean, maybe on sort of a, a more municipal level or even a state level, maybe, but at a federal level, I mean, we're not nearly as bad as it is in the U.S. in terms of how many choices we have. We usually good. have one choice that's going to make it, and then one choice that might make it, and then we'll probably have like two or three more that maybe they're, you know, they're not going to get elected, but at least they're not total yahoos and like a and complete we, nobody. You guys are a purely dual party system at this point. No one else stands a chance. Yeah, and you know something George Washington happened to say uh, that a two party system would destroy America. And we, we made a shirt and we put it in our store. It, it just says, I don't party. And it's got a picture of George Washington on it. That's on, <laughs> that's on epicpants.com. I'll just plug the website, you know. But uh, awesome. it, it really, he, did, he really did say that. And it really does mess up a lot of things because they're pretty much the same choice right now. But what we need to do is start focusing on community. Uh, remember when we were all out hanging out in California? What was that, two months ago now or something? Yeah, it was um, a while ago now. Yeah, so we were all out there hanging out in California, and I was listening to a lot of uh, California public radio. And um, here's an interesting thing. Uh, right now, there's a lot of community stuff going on in Northern California. A lot of small businesses are getting together, uh, you know, and, and working together to generate community wealth. That way, they don't have to worry about the, you know, the big companies that much. And on this community radio, there was one guy giving a lecture, and he kept talking about Vermont. So I drove up to Vermont to see what was going on. There's like 10 small, very small internet providers. One of them is providing gigabit internet to people in Vermont for 40 bucks a month. 
and there's like all kinds of small things going on. And you know, all the Vermont government is doing is they're funding it like crazy because the smart people in Vermont voted in good people. So that's what we got to do. We got to start on small levels and just say, you know what? Screw you guys. You guys can play. You guys can play government in Washington. We've got our own thing going on here, and it's amazing. That'll work out better in the states. Yeah, I was going to say the United States of America has right in the name that there are individual states, whereas here in Canada we rely a lot more on the federal government to keep things under control. And while it's not quite as broken as it is in the U.S. in some ways, it's certainly not perfect, no. and we're so, a little bit more locked in. Yeah, like what do you guys have as far as you know com community leadership? Do you guys have? I mean, I'm sure you guys have like cities and townships, or but I mean like. Yep. Yep. Like, what, what do you guys have to rely on? I mean, like... They don't have much power. No. Really? Like, we, no. have, a, we have a municipal mayor, but yeah. they pretty much just decide what, like, new garden gets planted. Yeah, it's, uh, they don't have nearly as much control. I mean, even things like police are on a federal level. So some large cities, such as Vancouver, will have their own police department. But even then, that doesn't mean that they can just say, RCMP, you're not here. We're here. Because right. there will be uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Vancouver in addition to Vancouver City Police in Vancouver. And only cities that have a big enough budget to afford their own police are able to even do that. All right. So let's, let's just put out a hypothetical there about Canada. Let's say, like, you know, uh, John and Bob get together uh, with Sally and they create a very small uh, web startup company. Like, what kind of support would they get from the government? You know, if they wanted to provide gigabit internet to just one community. At that point, now, okay, for internet, I don't know, but for small business startups, there, it, is, it, low, for, <laughs> there is lower end stuff that is not federal where you can get grants if you propose your business. But then they have to decide whether or not they think it's a good idea before you get any support. Yep, and the other, the other issue is actually bringing it back to telcos. Um, telcos are very much controlled by the government, whether it's municipal or whether it's otherwise. So for example, there's a small municipality near Vancouver where Shaw Cable, who is the large cable provider around here, uh, is not allowed to go, and Delta Cable has a monopoly. So in this case, we're swapping out one monopoly for another one, as opposed to actually allowing everyone to go head to head. And that's all uh, becoming more twisted as opposed to more clear over time right now. We're scaring the people in the comments. They're like, hey man, I hate politics, but I'll just say this to the guys in the, com in, in the comments. You know, technology is really taking over the world and all the geeks that were growing up in like the 80s and, and 90s, uh, those geeks are getting jobs and they have, they have to worry about all the regulations and stuff, but yeah, I, I agree with you guys. If you guys are sick of politics, you know, it, it is pretty scary stuff. Let's go peer technology for our Let's next topic here, guys. I'm just going to load up the, here we go. Correct thing. Boom. So Tom's Hardware got their, uh, got their hands on a Core i7-4960X. So what is this thing? Basically, it is less than what I expected. Um, <laughs> That's one way to put it. I'm going I'm to just I'm gonna put it that way. So what I did expect was that it was going to have Ivy Bridge based cores as opposed to Sandy Bridge based cores. I thought we were all expecting that. You're, you're expecting that? <laughs> yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> this bump. Um, yes. Well, you know, I, Ivy Bridge, I, I, I got some insider information that said that Ivy Bridge would have been was going to come out after um, or actually um, Haswell was going to come out after. So I, I don't know what I expected. I just expected more speed than this. I expected more cores. That's what I was really expecting because yeah. what Intel's delivered here is they've delivered pretty much that CPU and with like a slightly more different core architecture. So basically a process shrink, but a glorified one because when we moved from Sandy to Ivy, we didn't get a normal uh, node shrink. Yeah. What we got was we got a node shrink and some tweaks that actually gave a 10% IPC performance improvement. But the problem with that is that normally when we, get, when we just do a die shrink, we do something else. And we didn't this time. Instead, we've just saved power, which is interesting, without adding any oomph to it. So they had the potential here, because I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Sandy Bridge E has two fused off cores in it, 
Every single one of them has at least two fused off cores in it. They were there. The fact that eight core Xeons exist means that the cores were there. So what they've done, it, what they could have done was they could have added two more cores, kept the same clock speed, and I would have gone, yeah, still great for gaming, awesome for content creation, professional work, workstation work, and all of that. Instead, what Intel's done is they've gone, now, status quo's okay. It's going to be one full processor architecture behind the mainstream platform, which is completely unacceptable for what is supposed to be an enthusiast grade platform and not only that but we're not even going to get more cores over the last gen so we're going to get a 10 percent ipc improvement and we're still going to pay a thousand bucks for it what blows my mind is that they'll do something like keep the fused off core idea and amd just comes out of nowhere bam, pulls out this ridiculous processor well, let's, let's talk about that for a minute because um, look what you have to do with AMD. Like AMD, they don't really, they're not really sending out too many samples to the press. Um, and they're not really selling, they don't really want to sell these things um, unless it's with an OEM or something. Or they want to like, they want to put them in a system and send you the entire system because the motherboards just cannot handle the power draw. You have to have the right motherboard. If some idiot just buys this thing off the shelf and then gets a cheap motherboard that's only got like, you know, five layers or whatever, it's going to melt the damn motherboard. <laughs> So maybe yeah, I'm that's gonna pull why up this Intel's article really this. quick so everyone knows what you're talking about. AMD FX 9590. And the, I think the uh, GPU expert was the gentleman on our forum or lady, whichever it happens to be, um, who pulled up this article and threw it in there. And I actually have some things to say that I disagree with uh, GPU experts interpretation of things. Okay, so basically the 9590 is a five gigahertz CPU with a 220 watt TDP. Logan, carry on. All right, so yeah, like I said, if you put this thing on the wrong motherboard, it's just not gonna work, it's gonna melt. You, you're, and also you need some ridiculous cooling. So I imagine <laughs> with the Intel parts, if you were to you know, go ahead and leave those, those two cores, the two extra cores active, well, you're, you're only going to be able to use that part with certain motherboards because of the power draw. Uh, you're going you're gonna, to like, have to keep a fire extinguisher beside your computer, and you're going to need like, ridiculous cooling. I mean, if At you... stock speed, it would have been fine. We've seen this yeah. before with Xeon, and we know that IV is going to consume less power than Sandy. And we already had 8-core Sandys. But I think the issue is the fact that, due to the new process node, IV consumes a butt-ton of power when you overclock it. Yeah. So they were concerned, this is in my mind, about releasing not necessarily an 8-core, but an 8-core unlocked, begging enthusiasts to overclock it processor because of exactly the thing you brought up. Back in the Pentium D days, I remember pulling boards out of customer systems, flipping them over, and seeing the entire L shape of the VRM brown or almost black from those things drawing so much power. Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly the, the problem that they were going to run into. So I, I think that's why they did it. I mean, they, they just couldn't afford um, for number one, like, everyone complaining they probably didn't have a big enough customer service department to deal with all the calls they were going to get from people who have more money than brains they just buy the damn thing and put it in a cheap motherboard and then it melts and then they're, they're calling and it, they just didn't want to deal with it that's exactly why there's two you know cores that are soldered off speaking of having more money than brains the fx 9590 is extremely expensive at around yeah. 700 dollars um who is this processor for is the question i think we should really be asking ourselves um well, they, they've said that it's going to pretty much exclusively makers. NCIX has it now? NCIX has yep. it now. Well, then. I, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's the huge Intel versus AMD race. So if you want an insane processor, not one that necessarily makes a lot of sense, I guess you now have that option. So it's if for the ultimate AMD, AMD fanboy, basically. And that's it? Well, you know what they need to do? I mean, if, if someone really wants to buy this... That, that person should go out and buy like three 8350s and then buy like, you know, an NZXT Kraken or something really nice like that and just try each one of those 8350s and see, you know, which one of those they can get to 5 or 5.2. That is a very good point. <laughs> that is actually a great point because this brings us back to the concept of binning yeah. where we have people kind of go, oh, Linus, how do you think the then hypothetical 7990 will perform? And my answer is... Exactly like two seventy nine seventies. What are you born on the moon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is still a pile driver chip, 
At 5 gigahertz, it performs exactly the bloody same as any other pile driver chip. It's just very selectively binned by AMD. Yeah, and you know something else? I mean, we're talking about CPU right now, and a lot of the programs that I use every day are now supporting OpenCL and CUDA. So I think yep. a lot of the major programs and a lot of the games are now starting to see the, the graphics card as like, hey, we can tap into this power. So it's not just for gaming anymore. And I mean, like the speed benefits with Adobe CC are amazing with OpenCL. And even, you know, before with CUDA, I switched from, I keep switching back and forth. I'm, I'm going for a seven, uh, GTX 780 now for the, for the gaming, but... You know, Ooh, I, I, very nice. Yeah, well, I, it's the only thing that can run Skyrim with all the mods I have, but I <laughs> love the 7970 because it's a little bit faster in Adobe Premiere CC. So it's like, eh. But, I mean, that just shows that a CC? lot of programs are switched. now using oh, graphics sorry. card, you know, OpenCL acceleration on your graphics card as opposed to the CPU. How are you liking Adobe CC? We just switched over. Uh, we got a couple of seats of Creative Cloud licensed over here now. I'm actually loving it. Um, they need to update After Effects uh, a little bit, but I don't use After Effects, so I don't care. But I mean, that's just what everyone keeps telling me. They need to up update After Effects. But for Premiere and everything else, it's and, and Photoshop, it's better than the last version. And Speaking I of love Adobe, OpenCL. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying I love OpenCL. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Speaking of Adobe, we're going to take a bit of a shot at them since we're paying customers, although I don't think anyone's uh, on the consumer side paid for Flash ever. But um, <laughs> let's talk about the business practice of here. This isn't working very well there. OK, Adobe Flash Player. It's one thing when I download Demon Tools Lite or some freeware application and they go, Gee, Linus, would you like the Ask Jeeves toolbar installed in addition to this software that was, that's what you actually wanted, that you actually a, asked us? How about a trial of McAfee? We know you want a trial of McAfee. I would love to have a trial of McAfee. <laughs> yeah, why we got does, one right here. Why does Adobe need to do this? Why do they give you a prompt to download Chrome? Or uh, I think actually McAfee trial is one of the ones they do. It might be on like Shockwave Player or something. How immature is this? You know, um, Adobe CEO, every time he opens his mouth, I cringe. He clearly sees all of his customers as resources and not, you know, truly people yeah. he should be working for or pleasing. For him, the customers are just a resource pool, and that's very disturbing to me. I've, I've heard a lot of people have seen him that way. It's very, very true. And I have seen them do McAfee on Flash before. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen them do McAfee before. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what we get here in the States. Every time I go to download Flash, it's like, you know, I almost, the other day I was like just, you know, half, half asleep and I, I almost clicked OK to McAfee and I like, that, that was like the fastest wake up call. It was like a splash of cold water in my face when I almost clicked the OK <laughs> button. I was like, oh God, no. <laughs> you would have had to reformat. You have nightmares that night. Yeah, full cleanse. Hauntings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An exorcism to remove it from his computer. Yeah, but I mean, even the Adobe, I'm even finding the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud a little bit intrusive. I mean, that's, I, I like the programs themselves. Yeah. But I, I'd almost rather pay for the damn thing and then crack it so that you know, I could get Adobe out of my butt. They're like up there looking around. I'm like, guys, I'm trying to work. And every 10 minutes it's like, hey, the Adobe Updater program would like to download the Adobe Downloader to update the Adobe Flash Updater to download the Premiere Updater. Would you like to click yes? I'm like, oh, God. And then, and then when you're done all of that, it's going to say, would you like us to update automatically? You're going to say, yes, for the love of God, please update automatically. And it's going to prompt up. you again in two days yeah. anyway. <laughs> exactly. It's really That's ridiculous. Worst. That it's, drives me crazy. Oh my god, I've clicked download automatically so many freaking times. Just do it. I don't care about you. It's <laughs> like Adobe. YouTube. You're like, I only use you to view banner ads. Yeah. That's all you're good for anymore. <laughs> Killing yeah. me here. Man. I mean, at what point are we going to be installing Windows and while you're sitting there waiting for the bar to move across the screen, it's going to be like, you know, would you like fries with that? Can we deliver a pizza to your house right now? Yes. Actually, that's brilliant. Wait a second. Because you're, you're waiting something. for Windows to install. Yeah, you're installing Windows, which means you're going to be sitting there for a little bit, setting crap up. Would you like a pizza? Well, yeah, I think you've got your next business idea right there. Definitely. You know what they should do is they, they should purposely slow down the install of Windows to about the length of a movie and then offer you pizza to your door and instant movie streaming through the installer. Because it detects Wi-Fi connection while you're installing. You know what's scary is that's actually very realistic. <laughs> I know. <laughs>
That's That's what they, all these companies need to be calling us because we are part of the audience. So we would have the best information on how to exploit the audience ever. You know, we could just come up with terrible ideas like this all day and make big bucks and, and screw our audience over. That's what we should do. Yeah. So we'll we'll form a tech syndicate, Linus Media Group merger. That's basically called F the consumer. Screw the world. Yeah. yeah. Screw the world. <laughs> Oh, God. It's like the complete awful. opposite of what we always <laughs> preach about. It's like, how could we come up with the most evil possible way to monetize Facebook? Oh, wait, they've already figured that out. <laughs> promoted posts. Um, oh yeah, promoted that drives me crazy. You know, half, a, like, okay, so for, for those of you, sorry, I've had the headphones on and they're a little bit noise isolating. I've been really loud. I'm sorry, everyone. So for those of you who aren't familiar with graphic design principles, there's a term called below the fold. So above the fold in a magazine was the, or the newspaper was the more traditional sort of what people are actually going to see when they're stacked and they're sitting there. So below the fold refers on a web page to what you would have to scroll down to see if you're the average user running the average resolution. When I log into my pages page on Facebook, I swear about half of above the fold is giving me information about uh, how many people are looking at it and how I can get more people to look at it and how much it costs to get more people to look at it. I mean, I don't really support Facebook as a platform very much. I cascade my tweets down to Facebook, but other than that, I don't pay much attention to it. But how scary is that? It, like, uh, I don't like Facebook at all. I haven't had a Facebook for a while. I don't promote Facebook to anyone. I don't suggest anyone even uses it. <laughs> I don't even know what Pages is. <laughs> I don't like... I think I, the, I'm not the, a fan. The thing about Facebook, it's like, especially with us, I mean, if I can just speak behind... Uh, this is what goes on behind the scenes, everybody watching. But a lot of, them, a lot of the people we talk to, a lot of the other companies, they're, they want to know numbers of how many people you have on Facebook. So it's like... Oh yes. man, I got I got to give them some numbers. So I, it's like I can't just tell them. It's not good enough to tell them. Hey, we've got like a gazillion posts on our own website. They're like, oh yeah, your own no. website. How many? A million? Oh, we don't care about that. Tell, do you have fifty on Facebook? That's better than a million on your own website. It's kind of. And weird. that's a very good point. I got I got flack for not using Instagram at one point, so I started Instagramming because they wanted to see that you were hip and with it and supporting the hot social media platforms. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't know what the hell Pinterest is. <laughs> it's, isn't that the... It's like... Okay, I've, been, I've had it described this way. I'm not sexist. I've I have no it idea what it is. Female Reddit. That's what I've had it described to me. As. Wow, you just annoyed all four of our female viewers. I, I said I'm gonna get I'm gonna get letters from them. Do you know how often oh this happens? Goodness. We say something to about you, girl gamers. Not to me. That's been described to me that way. I've never been to it, and I've never seen it. It's getting me in trouble. I don't trouble. know what it's about. <laughs> I, I just retweeted that phrase to everyone saying, please send hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, just, oh, they're, they're pistols angry. Look at her. Thank <laughs> you for joining oh, no. us, Logan. Guys, yeah. Logan from Raise the World. Bloop. <laughs> <laughs> you know something funny, uh, Pistol? Um, Google thinks she's a dude because she looks at video game stuff. <sighs> So like, she's a dude. She she went so, into like her profile and like you know you can go and look at like what what Google's marketing data is on you and they're like yeah totally this this is a dude because you look at marketing stuff. You uh, look so at, uh, my demographics might be completely wrong. That's yes. awesome because it shows how like the system is actually screwed. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean if you like things that they think are dude things, they're gonna categorize you as a dude because obviously if you're playing Skyrim and GTA and you're going to these websites. Even even if you look at makeup, maybe you're like, you know, a cross-dresser on the weekends or something because she looks at like, you know, makeup tutorials and stuff. Or your girlfriend but, came over or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're st still a dude. So I'm wondering if my audience really is 96% male. I mean, like, I, I want to go out there and count them all, but I can't. That's, I don't have time. That's interesting <laughs> because nowadays, especially like um, elementary school, I have a buddy whose little sister is in elementary school still. Um, and all the girls are going to school with DSs. They're all playing games. Yep. Like, it's, it's not just guys playing video games. There is actually quite a bit of girls. So is Google just assuming any chick that's into video games, which there's more than most people think, is a dude? Well, unless because you're playing, must... like, you know, Animal Crossing or The Sims, because, I mean, right. even though that's sexist, I think a lot of people, like, like think that. Or, you know, a the lot, Sims a lot is of the time... only game my sister plays, so. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I even had, a, you know, a friend who was getting into uh, game development, and, and uh, she was, you know, talking to some different people out there, and they're like, oh, that's great, we need a girl, are you going to make more games like Animal Crossing and stuff? And she was like, uh, no, I play Crisis and everything else, and I play <laughs> Skyrim, Fallout, whatever.
I've got yeah. one of my one of my buddies that lives on his island on the island. His girlfriend's name is Randy. She plays like Skyrim and Counter Strike. Like you're not gonna if you see those metrics, you're not gonna assume she's a girl. I think part of it is a lack of exposure for for girls. I mean, uh, my wife um, didn't good. necessarily play anything more advanced than the 2D side scroller on you know Windows 98 before I met her. But by the time I was done with her, she was a pretty <laughs> reasonable <laughs> Team Fortress 2 player. A quite good Left 4 Dead player, actually, all things considered. And um, she didn't really play Oblivion, but she'd sit with me while I play it and she'd, like, you know, help. It's, not, it's just not super mainstream yeah. yet, but it's getting that way. Speaking of which, yes, hero segue, here we go, boom! League of Legends is now a sport in the U.S. Well, but only League of Legends, no other esport. So not StarCraft, not whatever else. League Just of Legends, Legends which is like League Xbox League. Live for the PC. Like, that's what the community's like. And I just said that on, on, the, on your show. Okay, shots fired. Okay, you're going to have to defend that. Go, go, I go. I agree with Logan. I don't disagree with him. I just said shots fired, smart okay, guy. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's... <laughs> the comments... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. I mean, it, that's it. It's You're just... going to leave us hanging with that? Okay, the community is huge. Um, I, I don't really play MOBA games, but um, yeah, it really is. It's, the community is it's huge, and it's a really young community. But um, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of people on there, as far as like there's not a lot of, of like people on there to be a good guide, if you know what I mean, like or a good example. It of, helped. Um, a of what a good community age. member should be like. From my experience, now I could be wrong, there could be like some grandfather figure who's like on there <laughs> like, hey, we shouldn't call each other, you know, uh, these names or use ethnic slurs. But for the most part, I, whenever gonna I see school. something from League of Legends, it's either some over-the-top death threat, like the stuff that that kid got thrown in jail for, which was ridiculous, or it's, you know, some kind of ethnic slur stuff. But that's just from my own, what I see, if the League of Legends community can come out and say like, hey, that's not what we're about, We'll do it and maybe show me something that's not that because that's all I see from that community and it kind of makes me kind of walk away from it. Um, you know, Kane is over in Australia right now at PAX Australia and they're having a huge uh, League of Legends tournament. And it seems like a lot of the hardcore PC gamers like just stay the hell away from it. But then there's an entire crew that comes to PAX and that's all they do. They go into the League of Legends section. Yep. They don't venture out and look at anything else. And they're like a different type of PC gamer, but they're still PC gamers, but they're, they keep to themselves, and it's, it's kind of a strange community. I don't exactly understand it. That is a very interesting insight. So why exactly League of Legends versus anything else? Is it just because Riot has all the money in the world in order to buy the attention that they need? Because I think the main motivating factor here was international gamers getting them into the country with the same kinds of visas that are given to professional athletes. Why not StarCraft II? Why just League of Legends? One, one of the things that I brought up is Riot is still not really, I wouldn't say a startup, but they're still really new. They actually have not been around for that long. Right. Um, but they're huge and massive and becoming an economic power. And they've been driving this really, really, really hard. Blizzard doesn't fight for their game nearly as much as Riot does. And they have started to more since Riot has. The Blizzard doesn't have the massive... Like, a lot of the huge tournaments are driven by Riot. Right. Not a lot of the huge okay. tournaments are driven by Blizzard. Now, they have stuff coming out, but they didn't before. Well, Blizzard's always been very very aloof to yeah. anything. What's actually going on with yeah, the game? Yeah, they kind of... They do the game, and they do it well, and yep. then they kind of go... Everyone should, you know, just do what we think they should do because we're Blizzard. And they've been that way for a very long time. I mean, maybe this is the wake-up they call they need. But the angle that I really want to talk about here, maybe, Logan, you can give me your thoughts on this. Is this going to open up esports as a more legitimate and less of an underground thing in North America? Because right now, compared to other markets like Europe and Asia, esports is laughed at. And I'm talking in relative terms. Oh, I, I mean, it could be a good thing, but I mean, what we have to look at here is the fact that the reason this is getting big, or the reason this is happening is because it got so big. And, you know, the big companies will look at anything that has this size audience and just be like, how can we turn this into something we can monetize better? And by turning it into a sport, they can monetize the hell out of this. Yes, so, they can. 
if other games Good get point. this big as well, uh, or if they look at this and then you know someone gets a bright idea in a in a conference room and says, "Hey, we can monetize other games." Well, it's going to happen, and it, it it's obviously going to happen with new games as new games come out because you know that's just the way things work. So. That's what I'm looking for is a, an executive in a room to think he had an original thought and go, oh, I've got a bright idea. Let's monetize all these games. Oh, that's a great idea, Stanley. Let's do it. So that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe those executives will be us at, uh, what, what was it? Bone the Customer, Inc.? <laughs> oh, so yeah, can... like screw the, screw screw the, the cons- Yeah, screw the consumer <laughs> or something. Screw the world. <laughs> All right. And speaking of people who are screwed, I'm going to segue into our next topic here. Boom! This was pr- submitted by E. Chondo on the Linus Tech Tips forum. It's from The original article is from Slash Gear. <clears throat> As if anyone with half a brain didn't know this already, Oculus Rift will not be available on next generation consoles. Uh, Logan, your thoughts on Oculus? We need one of those. Like, I mean, we talk about this thing a lot. <laughs> Epistle just ordered the uh, Leap uh, Motion, so have you seen that thing? Yes. And Very cool. The, the, like this morning, woke up and she was like, oh my god, I got an email saying that it's been shipped. So this combined with the Oculus, that's going to be like a different type of game experience. I don't think, it's gonna, I don't think this entire thing is going to replace the mouse and keyboard. Um, but I, you know, I haven't tried an Ocu- Oculus Rift yet, so I really need to play around with one. Have you guys tried one of those things yet? Yes. Yeah. We actually had a very cool opportunity. Uh, guys, if you haven't seen this already, uh, check out the Linus Tech Tips channel where there's a video called VR Virgins, and it's got keywords Linus and Slick in the title as well, where we both actually, it's my first time on the Oculus. It's your first time too, yep. right? Yeah, it's both of our first time on the Oculus, and we were actually one of the first people outside of employees at Omni to try the, uh, or Virtuix rather, to try the Omni, which is that omnidirectional treadmill. So we got to try Oculus and Omni at the same time. Okay, which I've got was a question. Cool. How the hell do you crouch with the uh, Omni? You lean over, you, well, <laughs> you bend over. <laughs> So and you, you just to, accept that that's the way to do it. So you, if you have back problems, this, then you're screwed. Um, um, you can. I think you can kind of bend your knees a bit. Well, too. wait, hold on a second. So we're saying if you bend over, you're not screwed, and if you don't bend over, you're screwed. Uh, how did I get involved with this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think you can do some funny business because it's how the Kinect picks it up, right? So I think if you can make enough of an angle somewhere, it will assume that you are crouching. So if you bend at the waist enough, I believe it can pick up as you're crouching. Or if you're tall enough so that the belt won't keep you from going down, I think if you crouch a little bit with your legs, the Kinect might be able to notice that and make a seat crouch. And right now, Jan is using a first-gen Xbox camera for motion sensing, which is pretty limited, whereas it might be able to accept much more subtle actions in the future um, with some of the solutions that he's looking at. So... Might be a might be a might be solved before it ever becomes a problem. Yeah, and as far as the whole like Oculus Rift on the next gen consoles, I don't know if I have any opinion about that at all. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> well owned. Yeah, I I have no opinion about next gen consoles other than who cares. <laughs> all right, let's see how angry the Twitch chat gets about that. Probably not that angry. They're mostly uh, I think mostly PC guys. Our following, I think there's quite a lot of overlap. Guys, if you're not already following, and if you're tuning in late, this is Logan from Raise the World. Tech Syndicate is probably the easier way to find him, because Raise the World is extremely confusing. It's Ray R A Z E W Zero. Just type Tech Syndicate into Google. Ampersand tilde. <laughs> All tildes. <laughs> Just nine. <laughs> I'm, right at the end. No I'm, I'm gonna name my first son nine tildes. <laughs> Hi, this is Tilda, 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 Tilda. Anyway, <laughs> What's next? you know what? Awesome. If you went with uh, if you went with an A and then a tilde, then the name would be a, a tilde. tilde, and then like middle name the Hun. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I just got an instant headache. <laughs> I'm sorry. You should have known this was gonna happen. <laughs> How could this happen to me? <laughs> uh, speaking of headaches, uh, there's a few headaches over at Microsoft right now. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but Business Insider has an article today. <clears throat> Microsoft is down 11.4%, I think was the last thing we saw right before the stream, which is more than when Diesel added this to our outline. And uh, that is today. 
alone, which may have something to do with the fact that they're sitting on six million tablets. Yeah, how much money did they lose on Surface? Um, so hold on. They, they lost okay. $900 million on, on Surface. No, no, 900 the million. $900 million is just the write down on the six million units. Right, that's just so on that's the Surface units. Yes, so that's $150 per unit writing down the value based on what they believe it's worth in the market, okay? And then that's the $900 million. Now, let's factor in, that, that doesn't even include R&D or marketing. I mean, how much do those commercials cost to make an air? Sorry, go ahead, I'll let you talk because I'm like going on about this. I wasn't saying anything, I thought, I thought Schlick was saying something. I wanted to go get ice cream. <laughs> right, we had an ice cream truck going by. I was, I was pretty tempted to just run out and go get ice cream. I'm sorry. I got There's a video feed of you. You can't leave. I'm like a dog, man. I'm, you're you're an ice cream truck, and I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna buy when I get there, but I just gotta go. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah. bringing us back on topic, much in the same way <laughs> that people see a Surface commercial and they're tempted to go buy one, correct? Say <laughs> like what? It, can Microsoft be a hardware company beyond Xbox? And even at Xbox at this point? God, who are you asking? I have, I don't know. Can Microsoft personally, be a hardware company? You, I mean, if, if you look at their track record, Zune failed. <laughs> failed. Windows Phone failed. Windows Tablet failed. I don't know of anything else. Xbox. Well, okay. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, Xbox is amazing. So if Whoops. they don't do like hardcore gaming, and they don't directly tie in Xbox, I don't really think they have a chance. Let's look at this in a. Uh, in like an Apple uh, way, because right now they're doing a lot of things that they see Apple doing and they're like, hey, Apple does all these things. We want to do those things too, because Apple has a much better control over their customer. Uh, and that's the control that we want to have over our customer. We want to control their experience. And we also want, you know, Microsoft drones out there, just like the Apple drones that are like, yay, anything you guys buy. That, that's what they want, but they can't exactly do it. And here's yeah. what Apple had that Microsoft has never had. Apple had Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs would go out there, and he ignored all of the, the customer research. He ignored everything, <laughs> and he made products based upon what he yes. personally wanted. And then Gut he would feeling. say, exactly. Then he would say things like, "How can the customer possibly know what they want until I tell them what they want?" And Microsoft is trying is to do this right. right now. Yeah, exactly. And Microsoft's trying to do the same thing, but they really don't have any idea what the customer they wants, that. and they're trying but to force you, the customer to I, want things that they shouldn't want. I mean, have you seen some of the research that's come out of Microsoft in terms of focus groups that they've run on UI, for example? Back when they did the ribbon for the first time, the first implementation of the ribbon was terrible. So this is in Microsoft Office. This is when they revamped the interface back in 2007, for those of you who aren't familiar with the ribbon or don't know anything but the ribbon. But I saw some of the quotes from the focus groups, and it was like they had found the biggest chimps in the world to tell them that the ribbon was the best thing ever. And the problem with that is that um, I was talking to someone at Intel actually earlier this week, and he was saying, well, we used to have kind of this vague metric that the enthusiast or the gamer or whoever was worth anywhere from seven to 20 times what they were actually numbered because they would talk to anywhere from seven to 20 people. And that is what Jobs figured out. Instead of appeasing a bunch of chimps who aren't going to talk to anyone, or if they did, no one would listen, Apple figured out how to appease creative professionals and bloggers and video professionals and all those guys that people are actually going to shut up and listen to. And he managed to build what they actually wanted. And people that will be asked Creative, big creative professionals. Dude, what are you using? Like what some, camera? Some, some what crazy software? DJ that's making music. What are you using? Oh, I'm using this platform and I'm using a MacBook. Even if it makes no bloody difference. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That pro guy that you idolize is using it. You have to have it. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's kind of difficult these days because I, I deal with a lot of creative types as well. And I'm on PC and a lot of them ask like, hey, what would you use if you were building a new editing rig? And I, I tell them PC and Adobe Premiere and it's just like, it's so hard to get them to come around to the idea of using something that's not an Apple because they're so indoctrinated. Uh, and Microsoft, I mean, they, they had a lot of success with Xbox and Xbox 360 and who knows what's going to happen with Xbox One. So they, they are having success there to an extent. But uh, as far as like their... Uh, well, Windows 8 has been, you know, a, a sort of a, a nightmare as far as the media goes. 
and then the surface. I mean, I really, I don't know, even know if they know what they're doing at this point. I mean, they're trying to restructure. You saw Bomber like, hey, yeah, let's restructure. I saw that letter. Yes, yeah, so I don't. We're going to be different now. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> I don't know what they're up to, really. Yeah, actually, I was going to pull that out as just a joke. I, I grabbed the YouTube clip, but oh, play uh, it. Oh, the it's so yeah. good, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, did Microsoft allow Apple to steal their strategy, and have they not even figured out how to copy Apple? I mean, you look at why was iOS so successful. I would argue that one of the best things about it was gaming. Microsoft had an opportunity to make Windows all about gaming and they are letting it slip away from them. They are abandoning it as a platform for gaming. They are instead focusing on things like a music store, which is them following what Apple's doing as instead of actually leading the charge on something where they have dominance. You look at what they've done with Xbox, where they've basically given the old you know, that company we were talking about starting to their, lo to their few remaining loyal consumers. I, I, is there still time to turn this around? And is that the solution? Well, let's, again, I like to take a, take a step back and look at the big picture again. And um, there's two different ways to, that, that companies work. And that's uh, closed and open. You have the old school mentality is closed garden. We will build all these walls. We will build our app stores and our app stores will be proprietary. And you must stay in our little place. And that's where we want you. Then you have a company like Google that says, you know what? We don't care where you go. We're going to own the internet and everything you do will be through Google and with Google. And we're going to be in your pocket. We're going to be in your, uh, you know, wherever you are, that's fine. You guys can go shop at Amazon. We'll still make money. You guys can go shop somewhere else. We'll still make money. I mean, of course, they've got their alternatives as well. Um, and, you know, I even see some some closed garden solutions coming from Google, which is kind of, you know, scratch my head. Uh, this is not the Google I know. But if we can figure out how, or if someone can figure out how Apple, because Apple is a closed, you know, closed wall type company, and they were successful in this day and age, if someone can figure out the formula that they used, that's what Microsoft wants, then they'll be very successful. But I do not support that formula as a consumer. Resurrect, resurrect Let's Steve Jobs. Let's go back to that formula, and uh, here was another article submitted by Ichando on the forum. This is a BGR.com article, and Apple has just lost 300 million potential mobile customers by alienating two of the largest mobile carriers in the world. So MTS, Russia's largest mobile operator, made a splash last week by announcing it will stop offering iPhones. Um, this was followed by, <clears throat> hold on, there we go, Vimplecom and Megaphone after their five-year contracts recently expired. So without jobs to basically say, I'm going to make the thing that everyone's going to want, they're going to want it because I say they're going to want it, and because it legitimately is, revol I mean, iPhone was revolutionary, whether you like it or not. Um, Without that driving force, is their business strategy, whether you look at it in terms of the, the closed wall or the pushiness, or, I mean, one of the reasons cited by MTS as dropping it was the high subsidies that are required as well as the marketing support demanded by Apple. Is this crap going to fly anymore? Um, as long as they have customers. I mean, as long as they still have their faithful following, they'll, the faithful following will go somewhere else. But a lot of the people are starting to wake up and say like, hey, we, we don't want a company that's going to sue everybody else. We want a company that innovates, makes the products that we want, listens to their customers and, um, you know, and works for us. So the, as, as people wake up, Apple will have to, you know, wake, wake the hell up and then change their strategy. But until, you know, they've still got a pretty big following that's going to go wherever they are. You know, people, people switched over like crazy when the iPhone came out and came to AT&T. Everybody dropped their, you know, dropped contracts with other companies and went there. Yep. So... And I mean, th this is, a, you know, the article says potential. They lost potentially, you know, this many customers. Yes, I don't potentially. I don't but think that's they, really going to be. They only had 8% market share in Russia anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, that's big, but, you know, that's small compared to the other companies. But 8% yes. is still a, a large number. So and just to just to jump on something Logan said, with this following, they were able to just drag around however they wanted to whatever suited them best. But the cult of jobs is kind of going away. 
It does feel that way. There was not nearly as much fanfare around iPhone 5 launch Just as there was around the iPhone 4S. And if you look at it, like a lot of the complaints people had about iPhone 5, blah, 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 it doesn't change enough, it doesn't iterate enough, it's, it's this, it's that. Um, what did 3GS innovate on? They wouldn't have cared if Jobs was able to go up on stage, be super charismatic like he is, was. And tell them iOS 7 and iPhone 5 are both the greatest things they've ever seen. Yeah. I think that's at least part of it. Also, with his vision, certain things would not have happened. Speaking of iOS 7, does it smack of desperation that they're doing something like an icon logo redesign and calling that a big deal? <sighs> it's... I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, none of, none of us care. <laughs> We're all like sitting here like, uh, Apple, uh. All right, so why don't we move over to... Actually, I have another Apple thing. Apparently, that, that girl who um, the iPhone charger electrocuted her or whatever, it looks like now with some new information, it might have been a third-party charger. So third-party chargers, guys, not just Apple ones, watch out because they may not be built to the same standard as a first-party one, and they might look exactly the same, and they might output 5 volts exactly the same, but uh, the safety certifications might not be there. As someone who used to work at a PC retailer, I did look into how much something like a C CSA certification costs, and let me tell you, if you're buying it for two dollars at the night market, they don't have it. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I need to say on that. Is it's you pretty much covered that. <laughs> Thank you. Done deal. Be careful what you buy. Okay, the eight character password is no longer secure. Logan, maybe is this the last one you want to tune in for? I, I know I yeah, had yeah. said I wanted to keep you for an hour, and you had said, oh, wow, an hour is an awful long time. I'm busy playing Elder Scrolls. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to mod Skyrim here, guys. I mean, come on. I, I, I like to use all these products. Like, we talk about them all week long. You know, we just we go crazy talking about them. And then at the end of the week, I'm like, damn it, I haven't even been able to play a video game. That's all I want to <laughs> do with my life. And then I'm talking about playing video games all week, but I never get to play them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, the eight characters password, yeah, it's no longer secure. You know what we need? We need uh, we need phrases. We need to move over to phrases. Think about how secure, you know, like a phrase like, my mother makes me so angry I could throw a cat down the stairs. That's your password. That's that what is we need. the most secure password I think I've actually ever heard. But it needs to be a full phrase, and then some of the things in there can be capitalized. Some of them can be like numbers, you know, like the, the E in, in the word the can be a three instead. No, that, you know, a system is not going to crack that. That's like insanely secure. And, you know, it's going to take a human being sitting down and trying to figure out what you might have typed as a passphrase. So get rid, you need to get rid of passwords and have passphrases. And to me, a big part of the problem is the way that the internet is lagging behind on this. It blows me away how many password fields don't allow over a certain length or require a special character and a capital, but maybe don't even have a length requirement in terms of they don't even ask for eight characters, or the, the, the fact that you can't just kind of have a system for things that you can apply across the board is what causes to me a lot of the problems because it means that most people can't keep track of whether it's all the okay so i use passphrases here and then i use yeah. passwords that are normal here and then i use ones with special characters and upper and lower case here and how the devil do you keep track of all of this and that is exactly what this article points out and that was that um the 10,000 most common passwords would have accessed 98.1 percent of all accounts because it's not necessarily even about the eight character password being completely, totally not good enough, which it also isn't, but it's also to do with people being utterly predictable. So the average user also had 26 password protected accounts, but only five passwords. And last but not least, with advantages in particularly GPU compute technology, which Logan was talking about earlier, <clears throat> an average high-powered graphics card with virtualization software would now be able to crack an eight-character password in an average of five and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, OpenCL takes over the world. CUDA. That, that stuff can crack passwords like crazy. And, like, we've even seen, like, a year, year and a half ago, I think, someone made a, a quad AMD card system that was just ripping through passwords. And it was just some random machine on a test bench. I, I saw some kid in the in the comments over here put um, that uh, brute force hacking will easily take care of a passphrase. Let me just say, nope, to whoever yeah, said that in the comments. No. 
uh, if you Not have a, a you know what if you have a, if you have a link to an article or something do you guys allow links in your in your chat go do it yeah because i because, i okay. personally i personally want to see that because passphrases are way more secure than passwords and Passphrases I mean, are specifically designed to specifically counteract brute forcing. So yes. I'm not sure where you so got that from. Guys, yeah. passphrases, even. So if you had a passphrase that was 20 or 30 characters long, that already is, and even if you added no uppercase, no special characters, nothing, pure lowercase passphrase, that is more secure than an eight character, no matter what you threw at it. I just threw a link into your uh, chat there. Wendell sent me this. This is from Bruce Schneer, and it's on security, and it covers this. So, uh, yeah, whoever was saying the other thing needs to read that. He is, he's Beer Games Beer, for people that didn't notice that. Yeah, that's... Dude, you have to consolidate your branding somehow. <laughs> well, it's just tech, tech Syndicate and Beer Games Beer. That's it. And Raise the World. Raise the World's gone. I mean... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's no longer a website or anything. It just happens to be our um, YouTube name. I mean, there's a lot of people out there with like YouTube names that are not the name of their brand, which is unfortunate. And but How know. ridiculous is it that Google doesn't allow that stuff to be changed? I was so mad when I found out that not only can you not change from one Google um, account to another, you can't change your URL, you can't take over ones people aren't using anymore, you can't even change the capitalization. So I bought the Tech Quickie channel from someone, and they only capitalized the T and not the Q, which drives my <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder crazy. Oh, yeah, that would, I can't that would change it. That would, that would make me insane. I mean, I've, I've sent emails and all that stuff too, and there's not much you can do. I, I've almost got my, um, I mean, I'm, I'm under review right now with uh, Google Plus to maybe just change my name to Logan and get rid of my last name. So we'll see if that works out. They might do it. But that's about as far as you can get with Google. Uh, this whole, like, you know, you must be your real identity thing is kind of strange to me. Um, it's it's one of those things where I don't really think about it much anymore because I'm so used to it. I've never used a stage name. I've um, I never really planned to be an internet personality. My intention was to just make some videos for the retailer that I worked at and we could embed them on product pages so that people could, you know, know how that product works and be more confident about shopping from NCIX. That was the original concept. So I have long ago just accepted that everyone knows who I am. They know my name. They know everything about me. But for the, for the average user, isn't that weird? I don't know. I think I think everyone on the internet internet should be allowed to have as many identities as they want. I mean, it's I like freedom. Just do whatever you want. Have 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 a fake name, put a fake picture, spy on people, be creepy. I'm just being silly right now, but you know what I mean. I, I uh, for the internet, I don't think we should be forced to have our real names. I'm gonna on, play on, like, devil's Facebook advocate here. And I'm going to say, what is the likelihood that the internet would be more like a regular community where we don't have that League of Legends thing that you were describing where it's kind of a wild west? Do you think the internet would be more civil and people would be less likely to run into a Twitch chat and spam it with raise your dongers if everyone knew exactly who they were and you know, ultimately could tell their mother that they were doing that. If there was more accountability, would that be a positive thing? But if it comes at the cost of anonymity, then... It, it, comes, at the it comes at the cost of anonymity. It comes at the cost of like, freedom, freedom even, because when you're putting it out like that, you can get attacked so hardcore. People will be, if you put a mask on someone, they will say what they're really feeling. Now, that also allows people to come out and just slam people because they're yes. jerks, because they know they have a mask on. But you often won't get down to the root of issues and have people willing to be like, okay, I'm against this, which is a big public topic at a certain time because they, don't want, to, they want to save face. So it comes down to that thing where my whole thing with, my, my problem with politics in general is that the soccer mom who puts up her hand in the middle of the PTA meeting is the only one who's actually willing to speak out, but no one gives two craps what she thinks. And that is a big problem, is that the only people who are willing to speak up about things are people that we don't necessarily want to hear from anyway. So you're saying that the anonymity allows people who normally wouldn't let their voice be heard, can I um, do it? Is now that... talk about it. So per people in public positions. 
that can't necessarily talk about something, but really, really want to because they feel strongly about it, can go on a public forum that's like the internet and talk about it and not have to worry about getting slammed for it. They can say their true feelings about something, and they can, they can stand for something they can believe in, but they don't necessarily have to take all the flack that they could take, like getting fired, because that happens. Right. Losing your job, uh, residents of your town disowning you, like family and friends disowning you, whatever it is. That anonymity on the internet, while it comes with bad things like the Xbox Live mentality and all that kind of stuff that we talked about earlier, it also comes with things that I personally don't think are worth getting rid of. So it gives you the balls to stand up for what's right, but also the balls to be a total ball sack. I'll, I'll yeah. end with this before I go out. I'm going to say, like, I, I agree. Um, I agree with both of you in part, but, I mean, really, you put a mask on somebody, you find out who they really are. And if you yep. put a mask on somebody and they're anonymous on the internet and they're a jackass, to me, that's who they really are, and I don't want to be associated with them. So it's a great way for me to figure out the root of who things are. And I'm also, I'm totally uh, with Linus Torvald. Uh, recently, he came out, and there's, like, some people yelling about him because he's just not a professional person. You know, he, <laughs> he, he curses a lot in his emails, even to people, like, at Microsoft and Intel. And the people at Intel were like, hey, can you be a little bit more professional? And he was like, screw you. I'm going to sit around in my bathrobe and do my job because as soon as I start acting professional, I'm not my myself anymore and he's he's like everyone who's trying to pretend to be all professional all the time they just run around backstabbing each other and talking about each other behind their backs why don't we all just be real uh and i think that wearing a mask sometimes is the easiest way to find out who the person really is so yep. wear a mask be yourself if i don't like you get the hell away from me all right and with those words guys one more time this is logan he's our special guest for this week powered by razor comms which you can download at this bitly link right here uh thank you very much logan for joining us you've been an absolutely fantastic guest and guys in the audience follow him on twitter as well it's uh, at logan underscore rtw if i'm correct yes indeed and uh, you guys can go and watch the uh, the tech is, is live tonight you guys can watch that after the after party it'll be on there you guys will you guys can tell them where to go to get that after after party's over absolutely and, uh, yeah thank you guys so much uh, chat's awesome you guys are awesome and uh we'll do it again sometime let them know you guys. via twitter if you want him back you guys or let them know if you don't want him back because you're wearing that mask <laughs> yes indeed say anything you want guys i can handle it all right good night man thanks logan all right, man, take it easy see you Oh, wow, I'm like accidentally you calling him over and over again. Stop. Okay, it's all good. All right, so I'm just going to delete Logan from our stream here. We've got a few more topics Boom. to cover, but let's start with the Twitter blitz, shall we? Sure. Guys, hit us on Twitter, and we are going to blitz through some questions. We've probably only got about 10, 15 minutes left on the WAN show tonight. We still got to do build logs. And we still got to do build logs of the week. All right. So in the meantime, HTC One Mini is coming soon. Dun dun da. Small hands rejoice. Yay! I was gonna say you must be stoked because I, that was one of your main things with HTC One. Was I'm it? not that stoked. No. And I will tell you why. So okay. this is an article from Ars Technica. Guys, feel free to check it out. We're gonna post the entire um, WAN show document on the forum at some point after the show. <sighs> so it's got the same aluminum chassis. Okay. So it looks beautiful. Okay. Looks a lot like the one. It's got front-facing speakers. It's got Beats Audio, which I never cared about. I still don't. Um, unfortunately, okay, oh, it still has um, blink feed and the ultra-pixel camera. But other than that, this is a very mundane smartphone. 1.4 gigahertz Snapdragon dual core, 1 gig of RAM, 720p screen. Uh. <laughs> so, unfortunately, the small-handed people who prefer smaller phones are still getting mid-tier devices because they're cheaper to make, therefore they are positioned differently, and the perception of them is that a smaller device isn't as high-end, and... I'm sorry, dude. Sad face. I didn't realize they did that. Good news is I already have a one. Yeah. And I'm really happy with it. But I knew you wanted a smaller form factor phone. And I, while I don't necessarily, I think there should be that option. There's got to be that option. It would be nice if somebody did it. Yeah. Like, and I expected this to be it, so that, that would have been cool. All right, guys. Twitter it. blitz time. Here we go. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Google claims they will have self-driving cars on the road this year, profitable this decade. We actually talked about this either last, last week or the week, week before. I'm pretty sure. Is the Kraken Pro recommended for gaming? Um, you could use anything for gaming. You could use dollar store earbuds for gaming. 
Um, whether it's recommended or not is sort of depends on your budget. Normally, I don't think either of us recommends gaming headphones or yeah, gaming headsets. Yeah, headphones are kind of interesting question from us because neither of us use headphones that have a mic on them. I used Sennheiser HD 555s for a long time. Then I switched over to SteelSeries 7Hs until finally that connector that seems to inevitably break on every pair of 7Hs broke on mine. Yep. Fortunately, I had just gotten a new 7H sample in the mail, so I'm using those. However, oh, okay. I don't think I told you this. I have new headphones coming. The Meze ones, the oh. all wood ones. Yeah, they look oh. nice, but are apparently not that. I heard, I read something about that. No, they sound all right. They sound all right. I, I got uh, the first one that arrived um, has a bad driver. It looks like oh, it, okay. the the package had like holes in it. Oh. So it got beat up in shipping, okay. in all likelihood something wiggled loose. But there's a new one coming, and the one driver that was good, I was like. Works pretty good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, could I recommend the Kraken Pro? I could. There's nothing wrong with it. Sounds all right. It's reasonably comfortable. It isolates noise a little bit. I love retractable microphones. It's amazing to me that it took everyone else so long to catch up to SteelSeries on this one. Yeah. Like, SteelSeries had it for so long. They had it for so long. <laughs> and it was really good. And they had so it like long. across the board almost. Yeah. They had it on everything down to, I think, the 3H at, uh, at one point. And then no one else had one. I mean, if I was to recommend a gaming headset, I'd either go for something lower cost... Um, something like a Siberia V2, I, so but they even those don't, they don't sound great. Personally, I can't. I hate yeah. recommending stuff to people, especially headphones, when peripherals. We wouldn't use if it. you're skimping out, and if you wouldn't use it. Okay. If, if you need a all-in-one headset, like a, I don't recommend it already. B, don't skimp on it. Sennheiser has options, but I personally don't like the PC350. And the PC360 3D, PC360 3D looks compelling, but it's very expensive. I have not used the new models, uh, PC360, the open one, because you're talking about 350, which is closed. Yeah, that's a closed one. 360 3D is the replacement for the 360. Okay, yeah, 360 yeah. was already pretty freaking good. But it was really expensive. Yes, it was. So by the is time you do that, you could buy custom one pros and a mod mic. Which I would recommend. Higher. Which you would do. Yeah. Uh, okay. First time watching the LAN show live and not archived from Pakistan. Hello! Ooh. Will Thunderbolt ever become the norm rather than USB? Possibly. Actually, working we have a great article that we're going to talk about after this Twitter Blitz. Okay. So stay tuned. G1 Sniper unboxing anytime soon. Yes. Is it worth it to upgrade from 570 to 770? Yes. Maybe. Depends how much you can sell your 570 for. Yeah. And if you need the extra horsepower. Look at it this way, guys. 770 is basically a 680. So go back and look at 680 launch benchmarks against 570 when they would have been directly compared. That'll tell you what you need to know. Please talk about Haswell e-chips. Um, they're a long way away. Will you let Slick PC do any unboxings or will it always be just you? Will you do any unboxings? I asked him about it like two weeks ago. I don't know. I think that was my same I think answer. That's what you said. <laughs> Logan was awesome. Yeah, Should man. have him again in other news. Android 4.3 leaked. Have we heard anything? I did not know it was leaked yet. I... I did know that was leaked. I heard it was seen in the wild on an HTC One at some point. Is that what we were talking about? Uh, no, I heard oh, it okay. in the specs of something. More better leaked? Yeah, but I haven't heard like much about it exactly. <clears throat> Zygmus Tech, Dark Knights 2, I have no idea. Is eSports a viable business for the future? Yes. Yes. There's a lot of business already started around yes. eSports. eSports is a thing. There's a lot of companies even dedicated to just talking about eSports. What's your so. best purchase on summer sales so far? Oh, I have to recommend Bastion. Bastion was on summer sale. That was an amazing deal and an amazing game. Uh, if you're old enough, uh, what is it called? Oh, man, something about Hotline Miami. Great game, but it has a rating on it. Those are both on really, really good deals. Hi, Dubai. Are you guys going to be receiving unboxing testing the new Silverstone AIO liquid cooler? This is actually an interesting question. And I had an email exchange with Silverstone that you don't know about yet. Okay. Uh, where they asked us to take a look at it. And I basically said, like, I was going to be completely upfront with them. Guys, go ahead and send it to me, but I'm going to tear it apart. Because it has aluminum in it. Um, and I personally find that to be completely unacceptable. They have a really compelling looking design for the radiator yep. that may dramatically improve efficiency, which is really cool and made me excited about the product. But I was like, look guys, if I'm going to say on every product that doesn't contain aluminum, thank goodness it didn't contain aluminum, then you if I see one that has aluminum, you gotta call it out. I gotta call it out. What and they, they said, oh, sorry, go ahead. 
No, keep going. Okay, so I linked them to some of the forum threads that existed for the Apogee GTX, which was SwiftX. Don't worry, the aluminum is coated block. Uh, and I love SwiftTech as much as anyone does, but that block was a disaster. Total disaster. Um, now, I linked them to some of these articles. I said, look, I don't care how good your coding is. I'm, I'm, there's no way I can give this a pass. And what they came back to me with was, okay, look, Linus, I totally understand that. Um, I understand that. I respect that. How about this? How about you let us prove it to you first before we make you talk about this product? So it's out there. We're shipping them now. Six months from now, or nine months from now, or whatever, why don't we touch base again? Okay. And we can go, look, because we are enclosing the whole system, because we are using the appropriate additives, and it's true, Apogee GTXs that were running the right additives didn't corrode. Because you look at something like your car, yeah. Your car is not, is, that says mixed, I mean, it has like iron in it. <laughs> yeah. Like, and all, there's so much gunk. Like, that's as mixed metals as it gets. Yeah. Your car doesn't corrode because it uses a very high mixture of ethylene glycol. Um, so they said, look, the additives are right. All these things are right. These aren't going to corrode. Let us prove it to you. And then we'll let you take a crack at it. And I kind of went, okay. Cool. And you know what we'll do? We'll slap it on the bench before we do anything. Yep. And just see what happens. What I'm really interested in, though, is their evaporating liquid cooler. Yeah. Just because it's cool, not because it makes much sense. <laughs> Christopher Guys says, we want more Logan. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was a great guest. Did a great job today. Three monitor setup, is it recommended? Sure, if you want maximum productivity. I, yeah. Uh, for gaming, I don't think either Slick nor no. I are huge advocates of but it. But productivity, though. of course. Would love to see you on the Linus Texas live stream again. That's at uh, Logan, I think is uh, at Logan underscore RTW. If Microsoft unlocked the bootloader on Surface RT, do you think something like what happened with HP Touchpad could happen? There's no way Microsoft's going to do that. And HP Touchpad um, only happened because they were cheap. Yeah. So that's not a sustainable business model. It's not like Microsoft can just say, oh, uh, Surfaces are now $99, also they're unlocked, and we're going to keep shipping them. No, HP doesn't ship touchpads anymore. Yeah. So there you go. How do you guys connect two sets of headphones at the same time on the same PC? Headphones we use a splitter. splitter. Yeah, yeah, it looks like that. We're not talking through these mics when we're on yeah. the stream. We're just listening. So we're just we're listening. Uh, about the Moto X, you can only get an Xbox to play Xbox exclusive, but you can get any Android other than the Moto X, so they're not forcing you. That's a good point. Uh, what fans would you recommend to use with the H110 to get the best performance? Uh, NFA14s, I think they're called. Noctua? Yeah. Just whatever Noctua fits. Go, go, go. Should Google buy Detroit? Oh yeah, we were meaning to talk about this. Detroit, so for those of you who don't know, Detroit is bankrupt and apparently Canada wants to buy it. And... I, okay, this is, I read this on, apparently there's a poll on I think CBC talking about if Canada should buy Detroit. I haven't looked enough into it. As it sounds so outlandish. That I don't know if I should believe it. I don't even know like what to say. But if a state goes bankrupt, like... Well, Detroit's a city, just throwing that out there. Yeah, but like... Or just if if a if Detroit goes bankrupt, if a state or a municipality yeah. or anything, like what happened? Oh, but specifically in the states where yeah. it's so segregated, if an area goes bankrupt, can it drop out? Could like France buy it? Yeah. I, I, like could could Detroit and then catalyzing getting bigger? Like could Detroit drop out? You buy Detroit. Okay, now it kind of grows and the outer areas are kind of wanting in, and then you end up buying the state. Could you buy a state? Like, oh, that blew my mind the second I thought about that. That's crazy. <laughs> just, just bizarre. Um, I'm like, are you going to have to cross a border to go from, like, Detroit to anywhere else? Is a hydrocopper version of a 780 better than a normal version with an EK block? No. Uh, have you seen Locket? It's an app that pays you for an advert on your lock screen. No. That's kind of cool. I guess if I wanted an ad on my lock screen. Is 8-pin PGU GPU cable same as 8-pin ATX cable? No! Please don't. Please don't. Uh, but would you want to type that passphrase every time? Some of us are pretty quick typists, and I personally find it faster to type a bunch of stuff in lowercase rather than put in a bunch of special characters. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh, apparently uh, the WAN show is on the homepage of Twitch. Cool. Sweet. All right. I think... Oh, boy. Some tweets from Diesel the intern. This guy. This guy. <laughs> Should we, uh, should we tweet him that he's fired? Actually, that's one of our after-party topics, is uh, being fired by text message. Oh, yeah. Apparently that's a thing now. 
Um, okay, let's go back into our last few topics here. Let's just kind of blitz through them. So Samsung has a new 840 Evo drive. So this was posted by Jeffrey Chu underscore 81. This is the CNET article that uh, he posted on. So they're available in 120, 250, uh, 500, 750 gig and one terabyte. And Samsung is claiming that these spec wise are a lot closer to 840 Pro than they are to the old 840 in spite of the fact that they're using TLC flash, which should inherently um, handicap the write speeds, but they have almost the same write speed and I operatings as the outgoing MLC drive. That's awesome for one, and for two, this is what we were talking about I think a few months ago when you asked me about SSDs and I brought up that I will be excited when I can buy an SSD that can be a one drive system. Okay. Because 250 gigabyte SSDs, which are popular right now, you can get 500 gigabyte ones, but that's still not really there. Yeah. If you're looking for We've a one only, drive system, I mean, they're expensive even for manufacturers. Yep. We have one sample 500 gig class drive. Yep. So if now they're going to come yeah. out and there's going to be a bunch of one terabyte SSDs, people might start moving to single drive SSDs. Systems. And I really hope pricing is close to the M4, which is around 600 bucks. Even though with the performance, I think Samsung's going to ask for more. But if anyone from Samsung is watching, there's pretty much no excuse for that because using TLC flash means this thing ain't expensive no. to make. Other than the R&D that went into developing their new 10 nanometer NAND which happens to be what they're using in it. So once they've recouped some of that R&D cost, I really hope that we're looking at mainstream pricing for these SSDs. Yep. Very exciting. All right, our next topic is, ahem, <clears throat> Ivy Bridgey, Adobe, you're too big for this, Shaz, eight character password. Eight, wow, we actually burned through a lot of topics today. Guys, let us know on Twitter and in the Twitch chat how you enjoyed the format. So we made a few changes. We did away with the live viewer callers. We added our special guest, Logan. Which was very long, but which was very well done. I think that was awesome. What I personally would actually like to do, based on the experience with Logan, is I would like to have a guest for yeah. the show. Yeah. Make it a three-man show. I mean, it was so good when Josh joined us. I'm going to invite Josh back as well. Um, I have extent... Oh, I think I can confirm this now. Uh, yeah. Next week, we have Lou from Unbox Therapy. So I know a lot of our discussions this week were focused around privacy and, uh, and security which is really a big part of Logan's thing. He knows a lot more about it than either of us, and he's a great person to listen to about that. Next week, I really want to have a lot more discussion about social media and YouTube, because Lou is, if I'm good at YouTube, I like to think I'm reasonably adept, he is better. So I'm going to put it that way. He knows this stuff really well, and he's also got a very successful YouTube channel. Also some tech stuff. Maybe we'll talk more mobile, because he's more into phones and console and whatnot. Basically, one of the things that we're going to try and do is tune the show to suit really well the person that we have calling in. Yeah. And then, the week after that, you guys have been asking for this for a long time. How long should I tease them about it? I actually don't know what this is. You don't know who it is? No. The week after Lou? No. I know a list of Let people. me tell you, if we had Logan on for an hour, we might need three hours for this guest. Oh, I know. <laughs> JJ from Asus will be joining the WAN show in two weeks. So I'm extremely excited about that. So we've got our next two weeks of guests lined up and I'm going to keep working hard. If you guys have any guest suggestions for me, do let me know and we'll, you know, we'll do our best to get in touch with them. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep trying to line up awesome guests for you guys. Uh, ah, yes, I promised we'd talk about this. Intel's Thunderbolt prototype flash drive. This was posted on the forum by ETRJ, and it's a VR Zone article about this device right here. It's an Intel, what basically looks like any other thumb drive except for this, guys. That right there is a Thunderbolt connector, and you can tell it's a prototype. Look at this thing, it's handmade. Yeah. Like the texture on it is yep. ridiculous. And Intel is saying that they are able to push speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, which is twice as fast as USB 3 at its maximum potential. So someone was just ask asking through Twitter, will Thunderbolt be as popular as USB? I don't remember exactly yes. how you worded it. I don't think it'll be as popular as USB, but I think you'll see it used more with stuff like this. I think it's going to be the successor to USB. I don't think that Thunderbolt and USB actually need to exist together, or it will be the backbone of USB. Hold on, I'm going somewhere with Maybe. this. Thunderbolt is already 10 gigabit. The next gen spec is going to be 20 gigabit. It's not even optical yet, which was what Intel was actually talking about. Light peak technology. It was supposed to be yeah. optical. So 
What would we need any other standard for if Thunderbolt was 100 gigabit? Cheapness. That's, that's, I actually completely disagree. USB 2.0, I don't think is going anywhere for a long time. But, as a backbone... As, as a backbone, what that made a lot more need, sense. What if we didn't need, like, you look at, is Thunderbolt, or could it potentially be, in the future, as it evolves, any different from hypertransport? You know, maybe. It could definitely be a backbone. That's a very, very good point. So Thunderbolt is already capable of running to a PCI Express slot and having a card run in it. Yep. Magma has their, uh, their th I think it has three PCI Express slots in it, expansion thing, expansion station. So if Thunderbolt was the one connector that's actually on the computer, and then you plugged that into whatever, Thunderbolt at 20 gigabit or 40 gigabit or 100 gigabit or whatever it happens to be, I'm not talking in the next five years, I'm talking future, yep. could be the only connection that you actually need and it could carry your display and your I.O. That, and your network. That makes a lot of sense for stuff like hubs, but hubs don't even get used that much. But what if that was the only option? All of a if, sudden you'd be if, using a hub. If that becomes a thing, that's true. But the thing is, USB 2.0 for a lot of devices doesn't really need to be faster. That's true. For a lot of devices, and, I'll, and it's so dirt cheap. But the USB 2.0 chipset here and the USB 2 chipset in your hub would still be cheap. Or it would be a tightly integrated chipset that connects via Thunderbolt to your PC, and then it actually acts as like a south bridge. I, again, though, you've got hubs, you've got other devices, people that are just going to want to carry one thing around. Thunderbolt cables are expensive. They won't be, for one thing. And we're assuming that any other computer you sit down at has a similarly equipped hub. So you're carrying around a USB device. We're talking the hub connects to your PC and then has native yeah, USB 2 on it. It's just so when you're sitting on the subway and you want to be able to plug in a flash drive. Yes. If you don't have a hub with you. USB chipsets could still... Ex oh, okay, I see. Okay, but what if Thunderbolt became not only an external it, but also an internal connector that's, where the hub was split out within the chassis? That's what I'm thinking. That makes more sense to me because then it can be the backbone. Like I said, when you first said backbone, I was like, bam, that makes so much sense. Like, I'm going to go as far as to say right now, I don't think we need a 10 gigabit per second thumb drive. Not really. Like, in the foreseeable future. In the next 20 years, I don't think we'll have a need for that. 20 years? I really don't think so. In 20, look at how long 4K is taking. Okay, why do we need big files? We need big files probably for content. Look at how long 4K is even taking to yeah, take off. Yeah, but when your mom is filming videos on her cell phone in 4K. Yeah. When that becomes a thing. We already, we already don't need Thunderbolt for that or 8K or 16K. We don't need 10 gigabit per second for a really long time. But saying that you don't need faster speed is kind of insane because everyone okay. will always want faster speed. Yeah. Now, if it comes with that much of a premium in cost, then no. Okay, fine. How about I say it. this then? How about I revise my statement? Thunderbolt, external storage devices, portable external, like USB key replacements that run at 10 gigabit per second will be completely unnecessary and only like sort of the same guys who are running around with Google Glass right now will be even remotely interested in them. 20 years is Most an insanely long time. Okay, but we're 20 years into USB, and USB's only gone through a few iterations. 20 years into... Yeah, Windows 95 had USB, man. So we're, what, 17, 18 years yeah, in. Yeah, I a little bit lower. And USB got revised to USB 2 pretty early on. We went a decade with USB 2 being all we realistically... And finally, we needed something more, and it came. But USB 3 is just, fast enough for a long time exponential bro growth is a thing but it's slowing down it's not exponential but we went from 1080p to 240 to 4k that's true but even those standards i mean remember too that we're working on new standards for video compression as well that's a really good point. and adding more processing power is going to reduce the need to have fast storage that's really good because point. storage has been lagging around lagging for so long that we've already been compensating it for so long we're used to it and another thing to add to your side of the discussion is cloud storage. Yeah, even cloud. personal cloud cloud storage. Yeah, if you can just do it over the net, and if you're just like, I want that file over and there. And cloud storage and the internet and the fact that even the developing world still has slow network connections is going to hold back that exponential file size growth yep. for 20 years. I think it will.
I'm, I'm not going to put a statement on that. Okay. But I, that's, that's bold. I'm not saying you're wrong, but that's pretty bold. So I think that those will continue to hold things back. The infrastructure will need to be developed further oh, yeah. before anyone's going to be... I mean, the, again... That's why it's taking 4K so long. There and isn't a there isn't a, a there isn't a, a a television station in like North America that is like yay yeah. 4K. We can't wait to use up 4X or even you know two and a half X or whatever. We can't wait to use up more bandwidth to broadcast the same shows. And exactly what you're saying is why uh, cloud gaming is going to take so long to be a yes. fully fledged thing. And they're keep going to and they're going to keep trying to compress the data more. Yep. I mean, it's one of those things where people talk about how 1080p doesn't look any different from their cable provider than 720p because they're compressing it so much anyway. We're still we're still watching at 720p quality. <laughs> how long has that been around? It's My 20 year time. prediction is not that unrealistic. No. That makes sense. That's so fine. there you go. That's my take on that. And speaking of future technology, that's totally friggin' ridiculous. We had people talk to us a little bit last week about how e about Elon Musk's Hyperloop. So this is the same crazy guy. What bring you Tesla, as well as space tourism, and is turning both of them into viable businesses in spite of the fact that they're both impossible. And he <laughs> has. <clears throat> started talking about this mysteriously dubbed Hyperloop that would allow you to go from Los Angeles to San Francisco in half an hour. This is an article on The Verge, which I thought covered it pretty well. And here are the main summary points. This Hyperloop, which uh, there's a drawing that I'll show you guys in a little bit, would have to allow an individual to be moving at 600 miles per hour. So translated into metric that's something like 850 kilometers an hour off the top of my head okay <clears throat> to put that in context uh, bullet trains top out at 360 miles per hour on paper but generally speaking they run around 300 miles per hour uh, musk says it's not inside a vacuum so it has to be extremely low power he also says that the transportation will be on demand so it won't run on like a scheduled train you'll show up you'll get in a car and you'll go and um, it's very low power and it'll be solar powered just from solar powers on top of the device. So this brings into, uh, this, this call, this, this raises a lot of questions here. So question number one is where are you going to get the right of way to um, build something like this? Have a giant tube? Because based on, this was, this was from some folks that worked on the bullet train where they were saying the human body can handle, I think they said about 0.1 of a G. Um before you start to get motion sick from turning. So based on that math, it would have to have a 40 mile turn radius. So it has to be pretty much a straight line. Number two is where do you get the right of way to build this? Do you build it up off the ground? More like, uh, like, a, like a Futurama uh, sky, sky tube? Yeah. Or, or underground? Or I don't, like that'd, that'd be impossible. Going a thousand kilometers an hour is gonna draw on your body so much. Uh, well, no, because as long as it accelerates slowly, you'd be fine. But so if that's it accelerates where... slowly, how, you must go here. faster at that point. Here, mm -hmm. so this drawing right here, yes, right there, was how, this is an artist's rendition of how they think it might work, and Elon Musk said nothing other than, this is probably the closest so far. So sorry, my conversion was wrong, 900 plus kilometers per hour. So here, is where the loop would actually be and then this would be an empty air tunnel right here okay and then the cars would actually go through this loop and then the air would go through the inner loop so the cars would decelerate stop you could board them on demand where there would be an acceleration zone which would then put them into the 600 mile per hour plus wind um, it would have to be extremely low friction and that's one of the things that um, is a bit of a problem because air drag is going to be a big problem yeah. with low friction being the thing that they're trying to achieve. And the energy to keep this air moving at 600 plus miles per hour is also sort of not in line with the low energy requirement what? that Musk has said. So yeah. if it was anyone other than him saying that this is going to happen, I think we'd all be just saying... You're absolutely crazy right now and ignoring it's it. Him. But because it's Elon Musk, I think we're all just going to kind of <laughs> be like, okay, dude, <laughs> show us what sure, you got. Man. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good point. Do we do build logs and then jump to the after party? Let's do build logs. All right, you have to search in the uh, Google Drive. I didn't link it here. And then just look for live stream folder. 
live stream folder. It's called the WAN show, smart guy. But you named the folder and have not renamed the folder, and it's called live stream. So I'm gonna put that one on you. <laughs> I think that you can just <laughs> calm down. Okay, where is it? This is the live stream agendas folder. Do you remember what you called it? Should I assume it has July 19th in the title? Yeah. Builds of the week, July 19th. I'm going to see where you put this. I put it in the live stream folder. That's mm -hmm. been happening a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, 50% of the stuff that I put in the NetLinked weekly folder actually gets there. By the way, I'm sorry, guys, for yelling a lot earlier on the live stream. I was just so amped up. And these are... Kind of noise isolating. Yep. So it's hard to tell how loud I'm talking. That and I, mostly I was just amped up because I had one ear cup off later and oh, I was you? still doing it. Yeah. yeah. I just get so excited about our show. It's so excited about Logan. I get really excited about Logan. He's his, so sexy. Him and his beard. You guys should tweet him and tell him he has a sexy beard. Linus, sexy Linus beard. says he has a sexy beard. Oh, it's four by three. I guess I can't complain because it was done for free. All right, here we go, guys. Build Logs of the Week. Remember, you can check these out in the Build Logs section of the Linus Tech Tips forum. Everybody go there now, linustechtips.com. I actually want to see if we can beat our old record. Yeah, we should try to beat our old uh, how many people are on the site right now record. So the Which old is one is... Like 1,929. Yeah, 1,929. So only half of you have to go to linustechtips.com right now, which isn't an excuse for the half of you that are saying, oh, well, the other half will do it. Everyone go. Let's try to beat our most online because... Uh, yeah, because it's be cool. the only thing we ever beat online. <laughs> Don't... It's... Okay, it's slowing down, yes, but continue to go. It will recover. I believe in my forum. Do you believe in it the forum? It will be okay. Your it, forum? It, tunnel, it, gets, it gets choke pointed a little bit, but then once people actually get online, it kind of opens up and it's fine. It, it can deal with that many people being online. It's just that many people connecting at once. At April time. Fool's, like one of these years, it's just going to say Slick Tech Tips at the top and... Oh my god. We should do that. You shouldn't have said that. Forget about what he just said. All right, hilarious. let's see if we beat it. Let's see if we beat it. Oh, I'm trying to reload the page, and it is not happy. Oh, it's probably, it's probably going to be... All right, you guys keep hitting it. In the meantime, we're going to show you... Whoa-ho-ho! -ho! Damn LED lights. Dat Silverstone Platinum Power Supply. Dat Dominator Memory. Very nice liquid-cooled build. That video card is very interesting. Um, I maybe believe, not a non-gamer. I'm trying to remember from memory, I believe it's a Palet card. Okay. So it doesn't look like something that you probably necessarily recognize a lot, because we don't get a lot of Palet here. Palet. Palet. Yeah, you tried it, it's okay. There we go, see? Did we beat it? Recovered. Did we beat it? Did we beat Recovered, it? Recovered, and it's going slow, but it's, it's holding. Did we beat it on the internet? We are currently at... 939! We're only half of the way there. So... Ah. A quarter of the people who are watching figured that half of the other people who were watching who were the half that I was referring to when I said that they wouldn't do it because they thought the other half would do it assumed that someone else would do it. <laughs> Very problematic. Wow. All right. That was, a, that was a big loop. I actually don't like these combo pump res things. Me neither. I never used one. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. But uh, basically, there you go, guys. Very attainable build. build. Very, very nice looking. Check it out. It's uh, the Focus by Night Raven. Uh. Or Night Raven by Focus. Thank you. All right. Next up is Project Air from Jake GFX. Wow. That is clean. I knew you would like this one. And there's a ton of cool things this guy did. I want you to first go through and pick up the things that you noticed, and then I'll try and add. All right, well, number one is they have pretty much taken all the color out where possible. Yeah. So these PCI Express slots, these SATA slots are still colored. For whatever reason, there's this one red accent here. So it's black with red accents. That much is clear. It looks like some custom color scheme stuff has been done here. So the GeForce GTX logo here has been blacked out. One of these memory modules is still black. Is this an in progress? Because this one looks nope, awesome. Nope, he, he went with a 
two slightly different styles. So he scuffed them both up, and one he fully scuffed out the dominator part, and the other one he just kind of scuffed out the outsides. I agree with you. Personally, I might have liked them both the I same I might have way, gone with them both the same. But it still looks really cool, and I still see what he was going for, and it looks great. So this is in an Obsidian 350D, which has had the drive cages removed here, and not to make room for anything else by the look of things, but just to keep it very minimalistic. And the airflow pattern, if I was to criticize something about the build, has extreme negative airflow. I would really recommend that this user turn this fan around. Actually, probably you could even get away with taking both fans off here, unless you're overclocking, and then run these ones at a very low RPM, and you could have yourself one friggin' silent system. I don't even see where the drives have been put, which probably means they're behind the motherboard tray, SSD which is awesome. The tray, yeah. Yep. All right, tell me, tell me what I missed. You actually did quite, quite good. He painted over the GeForce GTX logo. Okay. And I know I had pointed out the RAM before. I think I might be missing a few things. Very nice build, though. Could be kind of a problem. There's so many things, then we go on the WAN show, and then I forget what's happened. But yeah, I he, know. Sw he swapped out the fans on his uh, Silver Arrow. Yep. And the Silver Arrow is so nice already. So sexy. And then he went through so the sexy. trouble. <laughs> he went through the trouble of painting the sexy. Dominator Platinums and then scuffing them so that they looked sexier. And then he went through and painted on top of the graphics card logo. And then he, right, he scuffed, this I don't think you can see in the picture, he scuffed the NVIDIA logo that's on that graphics card. Mm -hmm. So it looks a little bit more rugged and it looks really, really good. You awesome. can't see it in that picture. Check out both their build logs. It will be in a forum thread at the top of build logs called Build Logs of the Week, posted by Winspeed36. Everyone go look at it now, because there's still only 1,200 people online. Hit it! 1,234. And the, it is loading. 1, 2, loading. 3, 4. That's my favorite number. Is it? Yeah. 1,234. Cool. Every day. What do, you, what do you do? Just party? Yeah. Just. You've seen me partying at 1,234. I'm all like... I always thought I attributed it to you just being crazy. I didn't realize that there was actually like... See, I should have known with your OCD that there would be at least some, like, consistency to the craziness. That makes sense. No, I'm, I'm completely... Uh, I'm com I, actually, I completely made all that up. I don't know what pattern you found. But uh, anyway... <clears throat> Thank you guys very much for tuning into the WAN Show. We'd love to get your feedback. We aren't changing the name of the WAN Show. We've had a lot of people tell us that the new name is stupid. I like it, which is why we're sticking with it. Um, also, too bad. And we are going to continue working on the format. I think we had actually a really good show today. Yeah. Um, I think having a special guest that was, uh, you know, really in tune with sort of the stuff that's going on out there was very, very helpful. Guys, again, Check out Logan. He's sexy. Oh, wait, no, there was a different kind of checking out. Right. Find his YouTube <laughs> channel. So Tech Syndicate, T-E-K Syndicate on YouTube. He's uh, been making YouTube videos for longer than me. In fact, his start was very similar to my own. I actually meant to ask him to give a bit of a history of himself, and I never really uh, did that. But uh, he used to make videos at Tiger Direct, for those of you who don't know. And he was one of the ones that I really looked up to when I was starting out in my video making career at NCIX Tech Tips. So um, Tiger Direct TV was huge already, and he had a show format that was very similar to what is now the tech that he used to do over there. And um, I, you know, I really looked at what he was doing and admired it, and uh, eventually, in terms of subscribers anyway, surpassed it. But there are still some things, even though he had to start over, and that is a big part of the reason that he's smaller, looks smaller than he actually is in terms of his actual following and how many people have watched him over the years. Um, so the fact that he had to start over really speaks to how strong and how quickly he's growing it again. Um, he's, he already gets something like 50,000 views on every episode of The Tech. So a new episode of The Tech did go up tonight, guys. Do check it out and peace out. We'll see you in the after party. Thank you.